It's homecoming here in Norman, Oklahoma. And as the sign reads, hey, KU, you're not in Kansas anymore. Sam Bradford inside the stadium loosening up, prepares to do battle with Todd Reesing, who was the second team all-conference QB last year. 100th meeting between OU and KU. football presented by Best Buy this afternoon from Norman Oklahoma it's the 16th ranked Kansas Jayhawks taking on the fourth ranked Oklahoma Sooners in another Big 12 heavyweight fight right now let's take a look at the standings first of all in the Big 12 North and the numbers Kansas at 2 and 0 then comes Missouri K-State and Nebraska followed by Colorado and Iowa State and in the south how about these numbers Oklahoma State and Texas sitting in the unbeaten seats along with Texas Tech Oklahoma number four in the nation but they're in the number four spot in the Big 12 South. Hi everybody, Ron Franklin, and welcome to Norman, Oklahoma. And speaking of coming to you from the network that features uh, the makeovers, the extreme makeovers, well, we had certainly that this past week. Oklahoma State and Texas vaulting to the top and in the unbeaten position. But as you all know, we got a lot of football left to play here in the Big 12. Ed Cunningham joins me again this afternoon. And one thing that is a given with all the great quarterbacks in this league, two more this afternoon that face off both who are so important to their essentially for their football team. And I'm not sure in the history of the game, at least as long as we're around, we're going to see a conference like this that is so good at the quarterback position. And like you mentioned, we're going to see that again here today. Everybody's been talking about the game that Sam Bradford had last week in a losing effort to Texas. But one guy, huge numbers for Bradford that I think a lot of people around the country have forgotten about was Todd Reeson. You said right at the top of the show, Ron, second team all conference last year. But nobody has talked about Todd Reeson because of Colt McCoy and Chase Daniel in those great years. But when you look at the career numbers of these two young quarterbacks, it's staggering. And here's a good useless stat. That two losses by Todd Reeson. Both of them in pro stadiums. He's never lost in a college building. If that's going to continue, a big day is needed for Todd Reeson today in Kansas. The offensive explosion that's taken place in the Big 12 has simply been remarkable. And two of the men most responsible for that are on opposite sidelines this afternoon. We'll have more on that, and we'll kick it off from Norman when we return. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Oklahoma Sooners a certain extra amount of focus appeared to be on that group as they took the field just a couple of moments ago to a standing ovation from this packed house and the Sooners knowing full well it is pure and simple you just got to win out you got to win one at a time as the head man comes out to visit with the officials let's go down to the sideline the third member of our telecast as usual Jack Arood and Jack take us a little further how has Oklahoma dealt with the loss this week well that loss to Texas and some people were worried there might be a hangover but what Bob Stoops did he did what he does whether the team wins or loses on Sunday he went through the tape he talked to his coaches he talked to his players he said look this is our barometer two questions did we play as hard against Texas as we could and did we play against Texas without making mental errors the answer was overwhelmingly yes to both he said well then it's time for us just to move on like one of his coaches Bobby Jack Wright said look regardless of whether we won or lost in Dallas we still got to win out the rest of the season okay Jack as usual we look forward to hearing from you this afternoon we got a picture of coach Stoops a moment ago here you see Mark Mangino and between these two Stoops and Mangino these coaches and families are very very close they've worked together for many years it goes back to 1999 when Bob Stoops was hired he brought in Mark Mangino and of course Mike Leach who's now at Texas Tech Two great offensive minds. They didn't have a quarterback, so they went out and got Josh Heupel, who is now a quarterback's coach on the Oklahoma staff. So a reunion of sorts today for the 2000 national champions. And the, the truly amazing thing about the fact they got Heupel, Josh was honest and said nobody really was offering him a scholarship except what then was called Division One AA or in that vicinity. And what a magnificent job he did here in Norman, Oklahoma, for the Sooners. And yeah, Mark Mangino had taken over as 
the offensive coordinator, of course, after just one year here. Mike Leach went to be the head man at Texas Tech. It looked like they got a win today against AM. So Bob Stoops' first staff's fingerprints are all over this conference. As we look down on the field, Brandstetter prepares to kick it off. And I can tell you this another thing that the Sooners have worked extremely hard on this week is special teams, both return and also kick coverage, because they now have this season one against Cincinnati, one against Texas, kick returns. And the head coach has said that's going to kick off I think we're going to see a bunch of starters out there on the field right now we've got Murray as one of the deep men along with Manny Johnson and a guy Murray that they're trying to break out a little bit remember he had that broken kneecap last year against Texas Tech he sat out for six months he has been very hesitant he's looked great in practice but again he gets into games and he looks like he's not quite ready to burst there is Johnson right there and we talked about Murray he has two career kick returns for touchdowns so it's not his first rodeo when it comes to playing on the special teams and returning the football. Brandstetter prepares to kick it off and I mean not to overwork the phrase but chamber of commerce type of weather like 71 degrees and I can't see a cloud from the top of this day. It is beautiful. Here's the kick. Going to be returnable from the goal line and it's Murray. 10 15 20 and is going to be tripped up at the 23 yard line and now as we take a look at the offensive unit for the Oklahoma Sooners it gives us an opportunity to stare down Mr. Bradford Sam he'll come on the field and take a look at the top as we will scroll the all 11 starters for the Sooners and of course Bradford will go very fast we saw this last week against Texas his game overlooked a little bit last week but he had 387 yards and five touchdown passes against Texas the most ever both of those by a Sooner quarterback against Texas they go option pitch back goes to Murray and Murray is going to have a couple as he brings it to the right side tackled by Mike Rivera well a lot of work this week and some things that normally that don't happen but I think after only 61 yards against the Texas Longhorns last week on the ground that the Sooners won in the worst way not only to prove to Kansas but to themselves that they can run the football. Murray has it complete going to be close to the first down at the 29 and a half Harper shoves him out of bounds and a play like that you might explain it is just as good as a running place like a pitch. Yeah in the new offenses that we're seeing around the country. Stop thinking about balance as run and pass. Uh, think about it, uh, efficiency of every play. Down and distance, what did they get on second and long? They picked up four or five yards to make it a manageable third down. From the 30, third play action. Bradford throws it, and the ball was, did he catch it out of bounds? He caught it. And the official now looking down the way, asking for help. Still asking for help, and they are saying, yes, he caught it. That's Matt Clapp, the fullback. It looks like Brody Eldridge, who would normally play that position as a banged up ankle, may not be able to go. Let's see if Clapp is able to stay in bounds. Oh, he did. That was a great job. Boy, that was but nice. also a nice piece of officiating as the one official right on the play was not sure and Check looked down it. to the field judge to ask him. Play action. Lobs it over the middle, throws it incomplete down at the KU 39 yard line. And that was uh, thrown a little bit into coverage. And Bradford had that one mistake last week against Texas. And near the end of the second quarter, he threw that interception into coverage. He's looking for Broyles. He was rolling out and overthrew it. That was similar. If I had to guess, though, I thought he was kind of throwing it away. Yeah. If someone got under it, okay. If But if not, throw it out of harm's way. Thro throw it into the uh, Oklahoma uh, student section. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave it in the field of play. Second down and 10. Play action again. And a pass by sideline. And I mean, he had him so wide open. That's Manuel Johnson. And Johnson, who had double figures in receptions last Saturday at the Cotton Bowl, has a gain of 21 yards. Nice job of protection by the offensive front. Well, Manuel Johnson looks injured. He, he came up grabbing that left arm immediately. This is a young man who's been tearing it up, had three touchdown catches in two of the last three games, including against Texas. 206 yards receiving against TCU. This is not a guy that they can lose. All, oh, tons of weapons all around the place, but let's see if we can figure out.
top receiver. This is a heck of a throw by Bradford all the way across the field. From an eye formation, they go straight ahead with the running play, and Murray is not going to have anything. Let's go back and look at the end of the play and see what happened. Oh, no. Yeah, he got his arm. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not looking good. Boy, boy. Yeah, he got it wrapped underneath the body of the defender. And the defender's leg came yeah. across, and uh, he was he was bracing his body with all his weight on that arm. It's Chris Harris rolling over, and uh, that does not look like good news for Manuel Johnson. No. Second down, play action again. And Bradford running for his life now delivers, and did he catch it in bounds? They are going to say yes at the 17 yard line. Well, I think Joaquin Iglesias says if a fullback can do it, I can do it better. 22 yards on the completion. And Bradford does an excellent job. He keeps this ball just enough in the field of play. What a snag. Wow. What a snag. Quick count again. Pass far sideline. Got it complete. That's going to be Quentin Cheney, the senior out of Tulsa Washington High School on the receiving end. And of course, Cheney has to come in because Manuel Johnson goes out. Emmanuel Johnson, a guy that they have used so many different ways. The emergence of Ryan Broyles has allowed him to play a little more outside receivers. They're really going to miss him if he's out. Under center again. Play action. Rolls the pocket. Has a man open. And he's waited just a count too long. And defensively, the ball was knocked away. I think uh, Philip Strozier is the man. Yeah, Strozier got a hand on it. And now you're in that situation where you can't pick up the first down. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some type of middle screen here to Murray. Tenth play of the drive. They need to take it down to the Kansas seven yard line. Kansas shows blitz in the middle and here they come. Good protection. Ball thrown. Collision in the end zone. No flag. Oklahoma wanted one. KU excited. They thought it was a good defensive play. Cheney working against Chris Harris. Well, that's good physical play by Chris Harris, but that's an awful lot of contact when the ball is in the air. And this is, they've only been stopped in the red zone one time this year. This is only the second time this season that once inside the goal. 20 that they will have had to go for a field goal. Amazing. And they are perfect, as you can see, 28 of 28 on the one field goal they hit it. This will be a 30-yard attempt by Jimmy Stevens. Low kick. Wide to the left, what happened on that one, and they miss. So all of a sudden, the string is ended at 28 out of 28. Manny Johnson is uh, heading for the locker room, and that is not a good sign. We'll find out something momentarily. While we are still scoreless here in Norman, Manuel Johnson, you saw as we went to break, was taken into the locker room for precautionary x-rays, guys. It seems as if his arm seems to be okay. What it is is his elbow is what is suspect. We'll give you an update when he returns. Okay, Jack, on the replay that we saw, the whip action of the leg, and it was just, you know, it was not an intentional thing. It was a reaction on the part of the defender, and with all that weight on the arm, it seemed to have caught it in a, in a backwards position. Pass complete out to the 29 and then the 34 Desmond Briscoe is on the receiving end. So Todd Reese, let's talk about him as we get a good look at him. And at the top of the screen, you'll see the offense uh, scroll for the Jayhawks. And it looks like Kansas getting a little bit in that hurry up mode in this shotgun. That would suit Reese well, I think. Running play broken open. It's Jake shot down the sideline and finally pushed out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Lindy Holmes got him after a 25 yard game. And here comes Kansas going very fast. They're doing exactly what Oklahoma tries to do. And they're waiting for the umpire to set the ball because they want to go right now. Four wide receiver set. In fact, basically the same formation that Texas used against the Sooners last week. Quick look in pass and it's Briscoe again. He has it complete and it'll be first and ten for KU as they move it rapidly. Brian Jackson was there to make the tackle. I think this is genius by the KU staff. I think this is exactly the right game plan. Come in and feed Oklahoma what they're trying to feed you. 
Well, three wide receivers left, one to the right. Reaching under pressure. Now running for his life, and he's going to be sacked at the 35-yard line. Gerald McCoy is the man who makes the tackle. And one major change defensively today for the Oklahoma Sooners. Moving from strong safety to middle linebacker is number five, Nick Harris. And, of course, we all know about the season-ending knee injury to Ryan Reynolds. He is not able to play. He's gone for the year. So it's going to be Harris who will play middle linebacker. Racing. Six. Good protection. Dumps it off and the ball thrown a little bit behind Kerry Meyer, the tight end. That was good coverage, but Meyer was there. And that was the weak side linebacker Travis Lewis following him and an interesting move to put Nick Harris in at that middle, back, middle backer and I like that interesting move I think this is the right team to do it I don't think that Kansas is going to be able to force feed the run game against Oklahoma so get a faster guy in there against a throwing team third down they need to take it down to the 20 yard line OU defensive players asking the crowd to make some noise. Reesing, and he just throws that one away, and they're going to call intentional grounding. I mean, it was about to be a sack and another loss of about 15 yards, and the pressure being applied by Austin English. Now the question is, was it close enough to Jake Sharp? I thought it was. Uh, he, he purposely threw it right at Sharp's feet. Well, that's a big penalty because you were in field goal range and now you back it up and you get complete. It, it would have been on the border of field goal reach uh, for Jacob Brandstatter, but now you. And when Reason gets in trouble, he, very calmly, he knows he's got his running back there, so he throws it right at his feet. On purpose, he wanted an incomplete pass. Well, I, I'm not so sure. Uh, he, that. No, he threw it into the ground. And he, the referee is standing in that position back with the quarterback. And to him, he grounded it rather than making an attempt to throw the ball complete to Sharp. So it's a punt formation as they now have the line of scrimmage backed up to the 44 and a half yard line. Dominique Franks is the deep man for the Sooners, and he'll be looking into a very high sunshine. Additional grounding is loss of down at the spot. So it's, going to down. So it's just like a sack. Yeah. And it's a nice job of explaining the fact that we know it is loss of down, but many people forget it is a spot foul. It's where it occurred, and that's where he had dropped. And that's where the ball, the official felt as though was grounded. Good pressure by Oklahoma when Kansas got it going. Yes. Two plays, they got really good pressure on Reason and turned this drive back. Pooch kick. Going to hit and go out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Rojas with an outstanding job, and I think they're going to say that it went out of bounds at the 7. Only a 38-yard kick, but that's not the important thing. The Sooners will scrimmage from deep in their own territory. Time now to take a look at the Best Buy impact players for the Kansas Jayhawks. James Holt, outside linebacker, one of the 12 Oklahomans on this staff, dreamed or on this uh, roster, dreamed of playing on this field as a youngster. Joe Mortensen plays that middle linebacker spot. He's going to have his hands literally and figuratively full today. And Mike Rivera, big guy, 255 pounds, who runs very well. Watch him get out on screens. Quick pass thrown out into the flat. Complete out to the 13 yard line is Brian Broyles. And that is a play that all of college football is in love with right now, where you set multiple receivers. One backs up, the two move forward and uh, try to block a defensive back. If somebody gets one on the ground, you can race for a long distance. Quick snap again. On second down, the ball. To Iglesias. The ball is loose and down at the 25 yard line. 
Iglesias makes a nice catch good in the open field turns to the inside it looked like that ball came out but good hustle the ball did come out good hustle right at the end Gresham. of the play there by Gresham yeah nice job always finish the play you, you know the defense is going to do it the offense has to do it as well Green was the man who wrestled the football loose but it winds up being a gain for the Sooners and a first down at their own 25 yard line Fate, the pump the pass overthrown and a couple of somebody's not on the same page right there as receiver stopped and the pass went well over his head. You look at the receiving core and what a huge loss by Manny John to lose Manny Johnson. We don't know quite his health right now, but now everything shifts, and that is exactly this grouping is what Sam Bradford got used to. Now they have to adjust on the fly. Second down and ten. Bradford right over the middle. Gresham, the intended receiver, and he was being horse collared by Rivera. Proud didn't like it, but the officials saw nothing, so it'll be third down. And Oklahoma going fast again. I, I wonder if this isn't a drive. You settle in, take a deep breath, maybe huddle up. Things just don't look great. You just lost maybe your best receiver. Uh, maybe settle down just a little bit. Third down, they need to take it out to the 35-yard line. Now Bradford with an audible, so they are taking time as a look over to the near sideline the offensive coaches Bradford steps up the ball is tipped on a great defensive play by Stuckey Darrell Stuckey went high in the air and knocked it down what an excellent job by Stuckey getting back into his zone coverage looking where Bradford was going to throw it and baited him into trying to throw it over top of him stuck he was hiding in there behind the linebackers and I don't believe Bradford saw him if he had seen him he could have got a little more air on that ball nice job by stuck Nall is the putter the first time that Oklahoma has punted this afternoon High pass and he was able to get it and not a good kick wobbly spiral Patterson's not going to be able to uh, even come close to this one because it was too short. Touching it down is Tunnell, and it's only a 33 yard putt. So, Stucky with the knockdown, you could see that Iglesias was open on the play. Let's take a timeout. No score. ESPN College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Best Buy. You happier. Dr. Pepper. Drink it slow. Doctor's orders and Nissan passionate about performance and proud sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. Hey everybody preparing for homecoming here in Norman Oklahoma. First and ten best starting position of the afternoon for the Jayhawks of Kansas. Line of scrimmage is the 44 yard line. In case you missed it, Nick Harris, who normally starts at safety, starting at middle linebacker, and this time the running play goes for nothing. Stop dead in his tracks. Demarcus Granger is the fellow there defensively to make the hit. And we had showed earlier that uh, Oklahoma gets out to great starts there outscoring their opponents 110 to 6 in the first quarter and for Kansas the last few weeks they've had very slow starts down 20 to Iowa State at the half only up 9 to 7 against Colorado so this could be a big flip for Kansas if they can get one on the board here. Racing from the shotgun pressure on him stepped aside and gets a long one away and it's overthrown. He was attending to pass for Briscoe but he was throwing for his life and unlike the last six pass plays he's been running for his life and this offensive line as we take a look at the city X factor he's not going to carry Myers not going to come into play much if the protection doesn't get better but this young man who is also the backup quarterback has started to become such a weapon inside expect to see him working that middle you talked about Nick Harris in there I think Nick Harris is at middle linebacker so that Meyer doesn't take advantage of them as Shipley did last week against Texas he has missed his last three pass attempts no blitz this time but the defensive end forces him out of the pocket flag is down that's going to be offensive holding and the pass I believe is intercepted at the 16 yard line took it away from the intended receiver that's going to be Lindy Holmes 
Now let's check the marker, but I believe it is yeah. holding, which they will refuse. Yeah, Jeremiah Hatch, the freshman left tackle, moved over from the right side to the left side during the break, and Austin English ran right by him. He had no choice but to tackle him. Boy, what an excellent job by Lindy Holmes pulling that away. They may review that. It looked like Briscoe may have landed with the ball, and I, I think that's what we're going to get. But either way, it would go back the because of the penalty. In review. So they're going to look it over. It'll give us a chance to uh, kind of slow down and catch our breath, and you can take a look at a replay yourself and uh, and see what you think of it. <laughs> uh, slow I, down, catch our breath. This game's going fast, isn't it? Well, it, yeah. it brings brings up a question that begs to be asked is <laughs> I, I think that I think Briscoe had the ball. It looked to me like Briscoe came down with it. But I know what you're going to ask and I'm going to answer. Well, the I, about you know, for me, the fast paced stuff is something that Coach Wilson, the offensive coordinator, thinks has worked well for them in the past. But I'll tell you, to me, when it's not paying dividends, then back off from it for a second. And to me, Oklahoma is trying to go too fast at everything they do. And what they forget, it seems like, when they get in that fast mode, is the power run game. They have a veteran well, offensive line. They really line. haven't tried. Right. I mean, they yeah. abandoned it. They ran one time, then throw, 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 yep. throw. I, that's what I... First down. Wow, they said it stands. That, that replay to me looked like Briscoe had control of it as he landed. Now, well, obviously, the replay officials did not see it that way. Now, I want to see if Oklahoma is going to try to run the football and stick with that game plan what, for a little bit. What Kevin Wilson told us yesterday, he said he got a little muddied with all of the options he had against Texas, wanted to get back to the power running, and now you see one back without a fullback under center. I would expect and, the power And this is Chris Brown. Yep. DeMarco Murray has come to the bench, and Brown will come in a tailback. And they hand it to him, and Brown goes right up the middle and fights his way for about four, almost five yards. That's four tries for 14 yards for Oklahoma. So they have not exactly <laughs> made up their mind that they're going to run it down KU's throat, having only run it four times. Well, same formation. Wouldn't be shocked if you got the same play. And that's what they do. Brown breaks it open. Brings it back across the 25 to the 26. And they're going to say his knee touched just short of the first down marker. Justin Thornton makes the stop. Got an idea. How about we line up with Brown behind Bradford and we run that same play again for this first down. What do you say? Well, they oh, put they a, got fullback. Put a fullback <laughs> in front, yeah. And now they stand up and look to, uh, to get the call from the near sideline from the Oklahoma offensive coaches. But it's going to be Brown turns the corner, has the first down. Jack Aroot, let's check in with you. Yeah, Ron, let me update you on Manuel Johnson. He has come back from the Oklahoma Sooners locker room. The x-rays proved to be negative, but they have taped him up considerably. You can see it goes from his bicep all the way down into his tricep area. The concern seems to be down by the elbow. Before he went in, he had full movement of his hand, full movement of his wrist. He was in a little bit of pain, though, when he tried to flex that elbow. Jack, nice. what have he said? It, has he said, is he going to try to play? Well, he's already lobbying for that. <laughs> well, we all know those are the most powerful features in America's society today. you got to be a lobbyist to get anything done. Bradford rolls the pocket. Now going to run, and he'll come out of bounds at around the 33. <laughs> Yeah, there was Harper who was giving chase and finally forced him out of bounds. It's still a gain of six on the play. Looking at Manuel Johnson, I know he may be lobbying, but his shirt's untucked. He doesn't have his helmet. And as a receiver, it's first thing you do, though, they take your headgear yes. away so that you don't Grab accidentally it, wind yeah. up out of the field again. So it looks to me like Manuel Johnson may be done. And if he can't move that elbow right, he can't be a receiver. Here comes Chris Brown. This time they run it to the right side, and Brown is close to the first down at around the 38. Shoved out uh, Brorson and uh, Joe Martinson. And Brown, the guy, everyone kind of waiting to see if DeMarco Murray can get back into that mode where he was last year with that huge run against Texas. But this is the steady Eddie. Brown is the steady Eddie of this offense, and uh, he's got great lean. And I, we're going to see this this whole drive, just straight ahead pound.
Springer who almost jumped off sides and the running play will go for very short yardage but it'll be enough for the first down and that'll move the sticks and that means that number seven DeMarco Murray comes off the sideline immediately and he will come into the Oklahoma backfield. So now with a Kansas Jayhawk down that looks to me like Kaleeb Blakesley a young man that they said was questionable. We didn't even uh, right, we didn't know if he was going to play today and he is uh, extremely important to them just simply because of size because across the Oklahoma front 337 335 290 284 and 308 and uh, at least Blakesley gives them 292 pounds the other fellows up there are not not that large. And he was giving it a go. He has a lower leg injury from last week's game against Colorado. But uh, he, he looks like he re injured the left leg and is done. And, yeah, and perfect does. point, though, Ron. This, this guy, not flashy, he's a big body in the middle, and they really needed him if Oklahoma is, in fact, going to stick with this downhill zone blocking run scheme. And those two guys on the outside are 240 range. And uh, the other fella in the middle is, uh, well, I guess what? Richard Johnson yeah. is the other large one that they have is yep. 280 pounds. Now Darius Parrish if they choose to bring him in the ball game and he's in there six four three hundred and forty one he's a freshman right out of high school in Wichita so they said you want size we got size Let's keep an eye on Darius and see what he does on this snap he is right there on the center's nose and John Cooper is saying wow there's a large cloud that has come <laughs> over my body when the man went in the three point stance. First down. Great protection. Ball is delivered and wide open. In fact, surprisingly, how open Iglesias, when he turned around to look, there was just nobody there. Finally, shoved out of bounds at the Kansas 30 yard line. Stuffy defensively. What a great job crossing the formation by Iglesias. And that's why he was so wide open. He was completely lost by the Kansas defense. And you're right, Ron, right when he turned around, he, he, he almost froze. He <laughs> thought there's got to be somebody there. Well, they roll the pocket the other way this time and into the boundary. The ball is thrown again to Iglesias. Going to be a gain of around seven yards. Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator, there on the left for OU, talked about how all of these toys that they have, he, he does sometimes overthink it. He was very honest with us yesterday. What did he admit? Yeah. He said, when we're not balanced, we're not very good. High formation, and they throw it again, and it's Iglesias. Great move in the open field, and because of it, he'll not only have the first down, it'll be first and 10 down to the 12 as Justin Thornton. Well, there was some laundry left on the field. He turned excellent. him completely around. Yeah, so difficult to get out in space against this type of player. Even more difficult when you're not a cornerback type of athlete. Play action. Looks for the end zone. Got a man. Touchdown. Clap. Matt Clapp, the junior fullback out of Phoenix. And he had two guys he could have thrown to. Both would have scored. Well, but when you're a quarterback, you have to keep the fullback happy. You know that. Excellent job by Clapp. We saw his hands earlier on that sideline catch. The coaches talked about it. He redshirted last year, played some as a freshman, got banged up. They said, you know what, we'll sit you down. We got Brody Eldridge, who was an all Big 12 fullback last year. Saved him a year. And they say he's such a better athlete than you think out of the backfield. Extra point attempt is up and it's good. And as we go to break, one more look at Matt Clapp and his touchdown. You see him catch it in the flat and then legs it in for the touchdown. Well, some of the Oklahoma cheerleaders before this afternoon's ball game here at homecoming in Norman, Oklahoma. These uh, these two teams. This is the 100th meeting between the two. Of course, you go back to the Big Eight and, and beyond. But uh, the Big 12, of course, is where both reside now. Oklahoma in the South, and of course, KU in the North. And Kansas, uh, not only winning the North and the Big 12 basketball championship last year, went on to win the national championship and last night. That their uh, midnight madness got very mad, but also sad. In uh, in Lawrence because they 
They put the flag. In. Crawford from the one. Hurdles a couple of people and he's all the way out to the 42 yard line. Matt Weiner, let's check with you, my friend. Thanks, hi everyone. I'll keep you updated on what's happening throughout the nation, starting with this Taco Bell update. Ohio State just does not lose on the road in the Big Ten. Terrell Pryor has run for a touchdown, thrown a touchdown here to Brian Rubisky, and the Buckeyes have just punched in another score with Chris Wells. Pryor and Wells both starring in the Buckeyes, threatening to run away with their 12th straight Big Ten road victory. Okay, Matt, thanks very much. Good to know that the Buckeyes uh, finally woke up because they certainly slumbered through 60 minutes of football last week at home uh, in the shoe. Is Meyer the receiver right here? And he'll come out of bounds at the 50, short by three of the first. And Meyer was our city X Factor. Uh, not 100%. Here goes Canson. That hurry up. He is banged up. Jack Arut said it's going to take about six weeks for him to get healthy. Doesn't have that Four time. wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Pass thrown complete to Jock Crawford. And Crawford has the first down. And they'll spot him out at the 45. And, and I still like this from Kansas. We were talking about Oklahoma. I agree. I think maybe Oklahoma slow down and pound it. Kansas cannot pound it. They lost both offensive tackles. A great blocking tight end last year. They have to do things a little different on the road. I like this game plan by KU. Yeah, KU missing a 240 pound tailback that was Mr. Keep you off guard. He did a great job. Keeper. Racing. I'll tell you what, that is a wonderful open field move. He dropped some uh, laundry from the defenders of Oklahoma on that play. Well, if you're an OU fan, close your eyes because this is going to remind you of number 12 from Texas. Last week, I believe that was working one on one against Gerald McCoy, who's a very good athlete, although a 300 pounder, but that's exactly what McCoy did a couple of times last week. It looked like they had him in the backfield. He gets out, picks up eight or nine yards. Second down at about one. Seven to nothing. Sooners lead. Pass long over the middle. Caught. It's Briscoe. And he will have a first down. And let's see where they spot him down. He'll be able to pick up a first down without scoring uh, without you know, without scoring the touchdown. It's 26 yards. Excellent job. Meyer's going to run here. Briscoe comes inside. And uh, the ball was a little wobbly when it came out. So it was late. Because the uh, ball was thrown right on time, but Briscoe able to go up and make a play. From the 11 yard line, Kansas trying to answer. Reese walks up and says something to Cantrell, his center. Reese, pressure again, steps up, throws the ball. He caught it. Was it good for the touchdown? And the official says no. Now here's the dangerous thing. A ball boy standing in the corner of the end zone put both arms up <laughs> and almost said touchdown. I would assume he's a Kansas ball boy. It looked yeah. to me like the ball was out of the end zone. A good call. So I mentioned to you they can pick up a first down without scoring and I think he is that close. I think it's going to be first down and goal once it is spotted. And they'll measure and Remember, they can review not only the touchdown, but they can review the spot. Mm -hmm. So if this is not a first down, Mark Mangino may want them to review it for the spot. Not, I don't think it was a touchdown, but they didn't get the spot exact right. You can review that. Let's take another look with our trusty computer-generated first down marker. Well, I think it's first down because his forward progress had stopped. He was clearly not, as he's going down, that's considered forward progress down. I think that they, if they reviewed it, I think that they could say that he was beyond the first down marker. I don't know that they will. I don't think they're going to. On this drive, Reesing has passed for 47 yards, and he ran for nine himself. And here's where you have to be careful. Reesing, such a good runner. Run pass option to the right because then you've got third and one. I think you throw one in the end zone if you're Kansas here over to the right to these three wides. Crawford is the only running back in the backfield with him. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen, as you can see. Racing looks back to the bench to get the play. 
Straight ahead, running play, and it is Crawford, and they say now touchdown. And the waving wheat here in Norman, Oklahoma, from those faithful who have come down from KU. That offensive drive by Kansas after Oklahoma went right down the field and scored reminded me a little bit of last week's game in Dallas. Every time Oklahoma got going, Texas had some answer there in the first quarter and second quarter. Brand Sutter kicks the extra point. It's good. That is the first TD OU has allowed in the first quarter this season. So a couple of firsts in this one so far. Oklahoma did not score on their first drive. First time in 28 attempts that they had done it. 28 straight. Then it goes blank. But tomorrow afternoon on ABC, the chase from the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Martinsville. Coverage begins with NASCAR countdown at 1 Eastern on ABC. So the Sooners were 28 of 28. Only one field goal this afternoon. They uh, went for the field goal and missed it. So they're now 28 of 29 on the season. And it's been special teams issues for Oklahoma that have been their problem. Of course, last week they gave up the 96 yard kickoff return to Shipley when they're up 14 to 3. And it looks like the game may be starting to get out of hand. We had a high snap, almost had a punt block to short block, and a shank on a field goal. So here's a look at that field goal, which we really didn't get to go back and take a, a look at when it happened. Stevens with the attempt. It looked like a very clean snap and hold and only Stevens second career attempt because the offense has been so good and he over kicked it yep. and yanked it to the left. That was a very low kick as well. It didn't come out real high and that's one of those things you file under good problems to have. Your offense is so good your kicker's <laughs> rusty. <laughs> First career touchdown by uh, Jock Crawford. Third rushing touchdown actually for Crawford in his first kickoff return and 42 yard return just at the beginning of the drive. He's the one who set it up as Murray gets the kick. And Murray will be stopped just across the 21. Jack Aroot, check with you. Ron, I had an opportunity to chat with Kevin Wilson before the game, and we talked a little bit about what happened to Texas like he did yesterday. And he admitted to me as well that I said, Coach, I get the feeling you're going to try and maybe run a little bit more. And he brought up this quote again, we're a multiple team that plays fast and scores a lot of touchdowns. And I said, well, all right, I understand that, but what about a run-pass ratio for today's game? He said, I don't want to go that way. He said, I want to play to our strengths. But he gave me the indication that we're going to see a lot more running and a lot more fast break offense, guys. Okay. Well, we're seeing fast break, but uh, we still have not seen a bunch of running as they give it to Murray this time. And he's into the secondary, and they're going to have a gain of about 17 yards. That's the question that we're all asking that begs to be answered. If they can do that, why do you have to hurry up and depend us so much on the pass? When well, you go back to the last drive, they did start going to that, that zone with Brown, but Murray is the guy that they want to see if he can get it done. Well, this one goes out to Gresham, the tight end, and he will be tackled after a gain of only two. And Murray is a guy who, if he can get going, I think that we'll see the play selection start to go more towards the running game. But we've started to see the pass game more and more in the last three weeks. Oklahoma rushing today nine attempts 44 yards and of course as you can figure out easily that's uh, almost five yards per try and they'll take that every time see a big opening and there's the fullback clap and he's going to take it uh, all the way to the 46 it'll be third down they'll need a yard and a half for the first down Holt defensively and what a change up to put Matt Clapp at the tailback position that time. That was the one back we saw Chris Brown running out of earlier, the exact same zone play to the left. Tied at seven. Running play to the right side. Has five, has ten, and it's going to be a first down Oklahoma as Murray finally was pushed out of bounds by Harper. And they're starting to move Clapp around. Remember, Brody Eldridge is injured, so now he played tailback last time. Now you move him, he double teams to the outside linebacker and op opens up a great hole. Matt Clapp is giving them a variation with Eldridge out that they wouldn't have had without him.
Sam Bradford gets the play. And you can see right now, he's going to go under center. And he'll go straight ahead with the running play, and it's going to be Clapp, who will be stopped after a gain of a couple. But now be careful. I know the young man is doing well for you, but he is a fullback at almost 240 pounds. Don't uh, don't wear him out. And Kevin Wilson has found a new toy that he can throw around in different places. Now he goes from the tailback to the eye fullback. Wow. Under two minutes to play in this opening quarter. Short drop, quick out throw. On the run for the first down is Broyles. Broyles, the last time our crew was here, it was his coming out party. That was against Cincinnati, and he had an absolute field day. And when the coaches talk about Broyles, they had to wait a year for him to get onto the team. He got caught with some off-field transgressions, was suspended last year, was supposed to play, and they, they don't want to use the name Mark Clayton. But they used the name Mark Clayton when talking about Ryan Broyles. He can be that good. I don't think there's any question. From the 32, KU showing blitz. And they come from the middle and the corner. Wide open. They've blown the coverage. And the receiver, Murray, falls down. All he had to do was walk in for the touchdown. And it was thrown a little too high. And he falls down. Take a look at it. Well, this is the second time that Kansas has lost sight of someone. <laughs> that one. Murray is not going to be happy about oh, that when they watch him tomorrow. He first got out yeah. to the workout. Yeah. Little counter play. They go off the left side and down to around the nine is Chris Brown. And a flag has come in. And I, I think, again, they're trying to do things so quickly that I'm not sure everybody was set. Holy. 73 offense. 10 yard penalty, previous spot. First down. Now they're going to get Brandon Walker, the right guard, for holding. He pulled around and just got his hands outside the linebacker. And this offensive line, big, physical, but they have to show up and compete every week. And coaches were not shy about a little disappointed in their performance last week against Texas. But look at those linemen. They're heaving every one of them and they're breathing really hard. That's what this offense does. So I continue to ask is it a positive or a negative. Quick pass Broyles and he just gets engulfed at the line of scrimmage. Rivera is the man the linebacker who came up and made the stop and they had made a switch two years ago Rivera was a starter at middle linebacker Joe Mortensen was a starter at the outside and they flipped them and that's the exact reason Rivera a little better speed to run out on screen passes in all of these spread offenses that Kansas was going to see Bill Young the defense coordinator now down in Miami made that switch and it was a bright one five seconds left in the first quarter Clearing pass, Iglesias right over the middle at the 10, reverses his field. It'll be first and goal at the four-yard line. As the clock goes to double zero, they'll move it to the other end of the field to see if the Oklahoma Sooners can put this one in. He's close to the first down, but I'm not sure he got it. The numbers on Sam Bradford in the opening quarter, 16 of 22, 188, and a touchdown. This presentation of college football presented by Best Buy will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, we are back. John Cooper straight from the bench right over the football. So I assume it's Sam Bradford's going to go under center. And we're going to run this play in a hurry as we open the second quarter. It is the 10th play of the drive. Everything started back at the 21 yard line. I don't want to extrapolate, but that would be a thousand plus yards in a game if they kept this pace up. That's uh, rather ridiculous for a first quarter. Gresham in motion. And Murray to the right side spins off a tackler and walks into the end zone. I thought he was going to get hit, picked up, and jammed into the turf, and he eludes the tackler. That was Rivera. Well, Kevin Wilson told us when they did that run practice on Monday, very out of character. They usually just do kind of a walkthrough, fix some problems, but they got after it on Monday on a run drill. And part of that was to see where Murray was, and they said he had the best practice of the season on Monday, and I think we're starting to see number seven get the form back that you saw last year before he got injured at Texas Tech. 
Jimmy Stevens to attempt the extra point. So he got it. Here's a replay of that touchdown run. And this was not what you saw last week by DeMarco Murray against Texas. He would have gone down on that first contact. And six rushes, just a few yards last week, under one yard per carry. And he does look like he's gotten much healthier in this week. Well, that college football at ABC is going to continue tonight. Number 11, Missouri at number one, Texas. And Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines at ABC tonight. That is at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And I know that both of us and our entire crew plan on uh, being sitting at the uh, dinner table and, and watching that ball game and uh, enjoying a meal someplace. It'll be interesting to see how Chase Daniels rebounds. Daniel, excuse me, rebounds. Yeah. Uh, he had uh, three interceptions in the second half. Two of which were just very bad throws. And if Colt McCoy can stay on the tear, I, it's unbelievable how well McCoy is playing right now. Kirk Herbstreet uh, brought up a point uh, today on the game day, which I totally agree with. As you look at the numbers, I mean, that's gaudy, folks. Almost 80% and 76%. But the, if Missouri comes out on the road and early gets in front of Texas to test their will and see where they are as far as focus, I think that's huge. If Texas jumps out on top, you know, then you're on the road and Missouri's got to sit there and say, oh no, is it going to happen again? And I think it's all about leadership from those two guys. Daniel getting the troops going and McCoy not letting anybody be lackadaisical in their week of preparation. We'll see. This is from the two yard line. John Crawford got a return, but not nearly as far this time, and he got whacked. Well, you hear a lot of people talk about he can make all of the throws. And that's what the coaches say about Todd Reese in coverage or excuse me under pressure. He has to lob one there. He throws a quick slant and then down the field under pressure again. He delivers a strike all the throws meaning he can throw every different route including the out cut across the field and can throw with touch and accuracy and velocity when necessary. This man can make all of the throws. Well, the thing you need to understand he is not a real big human being. We get a shot of him going into the huddle. Here in a minute and show you how the offensive lineman and everyone else just dwarfs it. That pass is complete and it'll be a gain of about three to Fields. But he has such wonderful feet and poise. He simply doesn't get rattled and he stays in that pocket and doesn't get flushed. Now watch everybody else as they come to the line of scrimmage. And everybody else's headgear is almost a full headgear taller than him. Got a great comment from Doug Flutie one time when I asked him about that. Faked it, now rolls to his right. And I think his knee was down. Yes, the official is going to say down at the 18 yard line. Okay, what was the comment that the Doug made? Well, you're going to hear booze because now they're saying an incomplete, but the lines judge is coming in to talk about it. And I'm not so sure they're not going to say this isn't a sack. He's going down. No. Uh, that looked to me like he was down. And the lines judge came in to talk about it. I think that's a linesman there. Excuse me, linesman. Capital L? Yeah. yeah. Really on the field, the player was not down on the ground. His the hand can. Yeah, he's outside of the pocket. That's right. And he threw it beyond the line of scrimmage. You can't go down on your elbow or yep, anything else, hand. but you can go on your hand. Let's see if his. Uh, well, well, he's not. down. <laughs> yeah, they, they'll review but, this. Yeah, he's down. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. You know, okay. His cheek was on the turf. Yeah. I'm surprised they're not going to stop this. Uh, that replay that we feed up to the replay booth there just clearly showed that he was down. Triple stack to the bottom of your screen. Third down. They need to take it to the 29 yard line. Pressure and the ball is caught. Did he catch it in bounds? Yes. They say he caught it in bounds at the 47. No, okay. I, I wish, I'm sorry, but we're not getting the definitive call every yeah. time out of the official. We got hands waving, but is it flat like it's incomplete or is it a catch? Because yeah. even the teams came running down the field. They sure did. Thinking was, that he had signaled that it was complete. It was the side judge back there who didn't make the call. He was waiting, obviously incomplete. But going back to what Duke Doug Flutie said, I asked him about Todd Reeson specifically. 
and uh, talking about seeing around the offensive lineman, he said, Ed, us short guys have been short our entire lives. <laughs> and right. so every year that we played football, we were the shortest guy. You really get used to it. Here's the boot hanging spiral. This is Broyles. No fair catch from the 47. Spins around. If he gets around the corner, he's got payday, but he could not make it. That's a nice job defensively. Justin Thornton on the special teams. 14 7, Oklahoma. Let's take a timeout. So we're back in Norman, and I'll give you some numbers that'll let you know that someone said, hey, I'm serious about what I'm saying on the practice field. Last two Oklahoma drives, 20 plays, 163 yards, two touchdowns in six minutes and 56 seconds. I think that gentleman right there who's only lost two on this field in his uh, entire tenure has uh, explained how the cow ate the cabbage here in uh, the latter stages of the first quarter of this ball game. Sam Bradford, a really good fake, and then throws to Iglesias, who will step out of bounds at the 38 yard line. Well, we were just showing Todd Reesing making, quote unquote, all of the throws. One thing that Sam Bradford did during the offseason was improve his overall body strength, and his arm has gotten remarkably stronger than last year. Well, quickly, ball is pitched back. They'll keep it on the ground, and there's not going to be but one yard for Chris Brown. That's a nice job defensively as the KU defense with a good job of pursuit but they've been having to run side side a lot haven't they in a tennis match that's deadly yeah. and Joaquin Iglesias picking up the slack with Manuel Johnson who's out with a an apparent elbow injury and uh, that, that's a big loss if he's gone for any length of time but Iglesias can pick up some slack as you see but Murray got the handoff and then he got three blue helmeted Kansas Jayhawks Richard Johnson was the first one to lead the charge you can see him shaking his head yes it was me uh, Jack Aroot, let's check in with you quickly well, I know you guys upstairs have been wondering about the O line and especially on those long drives yeah they end up with their hands on their hips but when they get back to the sidelines when the D is out there I think that's been the advantage Ron they do get resustained they get rehydrated and they've got big air conditioners here Big question, what happens in the fourth quarter? We'll be here to tell you. <laughs> we'll get that sponsored also, Jack, okay? 12.43 left until the halftime, and there's the bubble screen, or the, uh, the 10 different names for it. Uh, but anyway, let's see what uh, Oklahoma does here. They are quite a distance from picking up the first. Yeah, and you're right. Is he, this uh, yeah, Jimmy, four down? I think you're beyond Jimmy Stevens' range. He yeah. already had the miss. He's out about 32-33. About so, yeah, I think you go for it here on fourth down for sure. All right, the line to make. The situation is the line to make is the 29 of Kansas. 14-7, oh, OU on top. If they don't get it, KU gets it at their own 36. A little bit of hurry. Two seconds down to one. Now, timeout was called, and that must have come from the bench. Timeout, Oklahoma. Their first timeout this half. So let's take a timeout with them. 14 7. Sooners lead it. Will they go for fourth down when we come back? We'll tell you in just a moment. Did that man say JR's was, <laughs> they were serving fried Jayhawk? Yeah, yeah. JR's. I know they got fried pickles. I didn't know they had fried Jayhawk. And that is JR. If you are a wrestling fan, you know him. Not only a great announcer for wrestling, but great barbecue man as well. Bradford, by the way, has hit the last 11 in a row, Ed. He started off 7 of 13. So 18 of 24, pretty doggone good. Fourth down. Looking. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver, and I'll tell you, that was the toughest one to complete because there were two defenders there on uh, Tunnell. Well, that was a nice finish of the play by Kansas. We want to explain why you go for it there. Here's the 20 yard line right here. They were on the 35. So if you punt it into the end zone, you come out to the to the 20, you only gain 15 yards of field position. So if you're in that tweener distance where your kicker can't quite make it, it's not a big field position problem if you don't make it on fourth down. Jake Sharp into the backfield again, number one. Junior 
5 10. They're going to run a reverse, and it's a reverse pass. Pressure thrown complete right over the middle at the 48 yard line, and in stops is Dexton Fields, the senior out of South Oak Cliff in Dallas. Well, it really helps when you're probably your best receiver is also your backup quarterback. And it just too many bodies flying around. And when you have a quarterback on a reverse instead of a wide receiver, you can actually go through his progression, which is exactly what Meyer did. That was his second read. See Oklahoma shifting around on defense. Here comes pressure. Reesing gets it away, and he's got it to Briscoe. Briscoe stopped immediately at the 41. Well, time now for us to take a look at the Aflac trivia question. Favorite part of the broadcast. And the question is, who has the longest run from scrimmage in the Kansas-Oklahoma series in the history of this series? Well, there's been some great ones, hasn't there? Oh, I'm telling you. Ball is loose. Scramble for it at the 37-yard line. And... I've been on the bottom a few of those scrums. It gets a little nasty. Well, that's the fourth OU player that's come up pointing the other way. We've heard nothing from the officials, so that's bad for OU, good for KU. You get finger pulling, get a cleat or two in somebody's arm to try to get that ball out. You'd be amazed how much can happen at the bottom of that pile. Now they're saying Oklahoma football. Second turnover of the afternoon by the Jayhawks. And I believe it was Travis Lewis who just is going to be a blur. As Kansas recovered the ball. Oh First boy, ball. yeah, that thing really came out early on the hit. And as they scramble for it. That was not. Now, now they've reversed it. And they're saying Kansas basketball. So Oklahoma's having to get their defensive players back out on the field in a hurry. KU's at the line of scrimmage. I, I'm not so sure I wouldn't call a timeout here. That was actually Clayton who came in, the converted safety who hit it. Well, uh, the, the, the umpire's not going to move. This is, this is a, uh, one of the rules. Uh, they allow the defense time to reset, so they don't need to take a timeout to get their defense set. The umpire won't move until the defense is ready. So it's first down KU from the 38-yard line. We'll try to go back and look at the tape and also get an explanation. Play action. Wanted to throw one up. Not open, so he throws to the safety valve. Briscoe catches it and steps out of bounds at around the 32-yard line. Let's take a look at that fumble. Again, Keenan Clayton does a nice job getting his shoulder right on the ball. And it's, it's everyone diving around it. There's legs everywhere. And that looked like one of the big linemen, Cantrell, the center, who got in there and maybe got it. But, boy, it's hard to tell. Lost it underneath all of that. Second down, they got to take it to the 28-yard line. And the straight handoff, Jake, the sharp man, <laughs> takes it to the left side, and he's down for the first down at the 23-yard line. Well, Lenny Kansas, Holmes defensively. Kansas changed up their offense quite significantly during the bye week. You had mentioned Brandon Ant McAnderson now gone, a big 230-pounder. Now they're finding ways to get Jake Sharp more involved in the offense, who's more of a straight-line runner. Sharp hit at the line of scrimmage, spins off a tackler, spins off another, and fights his way down to about the 14-yard line. Harris finally made the tackle for Oklahoma. One of the things in meeting with Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator yesterday, one, the only real thing he was disappointed with in that effort last week was missed tackles, and he started well, to see more three of that. right yep. there. Yep. This one earlier on Reesing. Option well. play back into the boundary. Reesing keeps the ball and will have the first down as Travis Lewis makes the tackle, but it is a first down, Kansas. They trail 14 to 7. We got about just under nine and a half to play. I think the secret to this league's great quarterbacks is how competitive each one of them is. They don't flinch. McCoy, Bradford, Daniel, all of them, and Reesing is right in that group. You can see four wide receivers bunched to the bottom of your screen, which, of course, is out to the right. One lone receiver to the left. Reesing, quarterback draw, got him spread out. He takes it forward, and he'll be stopped finally at the eight-yard line by McCoy. 
Got him spread out all over the field, and it's a nice gain on the quarterback keeper. And that's what you can do. You see it all over the place. Oklahoma's not going to do it much with Bradford. He's not that fleet of foot. But all over the Big 12. Empty that backfield. Defense is outnumbered. Now you turn your quarterback into a running back. Ninth play of the drive. It all started back at the 31-yard line. Racing. Looks to his right. Now back to his left. Got a man there. It is intercepted by Oklahoma. Right at the end zone line is Lindy Holmes. Turnover number three against the Jayhawks in the first half. That's right. They took away the fumble, so only two. Well, for the Jayhawks coaching staff, one of the critiques they have of Todd Reesing, and it's exactly what Mark Mangino was saying to him right there, you don't have to be a hero. You're, you're a gifted young man. You're an athletic young man. But this is a guy trying to do too much on this play. He's Lindy Holmes going one on one with the receiver on that side Desmond Briscoe. And you can't throw that ball on Lindy Holmes. And you, he's, you're fortunate he didn't go 99 yards for a touchdown. But uh, if there is a critique the coaches have of Todd Reese and sometimes he tries a little too much to be the hero. This is Brown. He'll be hit at the line of scrimmage, gaining one Borson defensively for the Jayhawks. Clock about to go under eight minutes left until halftime. Oklahoma 14 to 7. And of course, he had that big interception at the end of the game against South Florida. Big preseason, or not preseason, non conference game early in the season. Uh, that uh, South Florida then went down and kicked the winning field goal. So they'll throw it away sometimes. Bradford wide open over the middle and the ball is dropped. Well Gresham has dropped one and now Iglesias. Gresham's ball should have been caught for at least a first and goal if not a touchdown. And this one right here Iglesias no excuse. Hit him in the wrong spot dead in the hands. And you see this sometimes guys who are so gifted in the open field as Iglesias is. They get in their head a little bit and think OK what move am I going to make and they forget. If I don't catch it first I can't make any moves. This is third down now. Bradford from a shotgun. Out in the flat has it complete. They're not going to be close to the first down. And now put an asterisk by second down drop by Iglesias because they're going to have to punt the ball right back to the Kansas Jayhawks and they stand to get very good field position. And here's where the hurry up I think sometimes hurts you first time you've had three and out today yeah, also. and you, you didn't need any clock and your defense just gave up a long drive although they got the turnover and now they have to run right back onto the field and I bet you Kansas is going to come out and go hurry up on them to take advantage of them being winded. Well they were coming after it. Nall's kick not very far. Fair catch is called for and made, but boy, they got great field position. It's only a 41 yard punt. Let's take a timeout. 14 7 Oklahoma still on top. So we are back 14 7 Oklahoma. You know, Kansas wasted some great plays on that last drive. Got very lucky. The officials pointed in the direction of Oklahoma, but I think they pointed in the wrong way. Jake Sharp had a nice run. It was an excellent drive until Reesing made a bad throw that Lindy Holmes made him pay for. Now let's see if Oklahoma is winded here on defense. As the Jayhawks get the ball with excellent field position at their own 44, and they got seven minutes and 11 seconds to work with. Reesing. Play action. Sets deep in the pocket, goes deep. Got a man wide open and a blown coverage, and it is Briscoe. How in the world did he get that wide open? And the crowd just groans, asking the same question. 40 yards in the pass play. Well, this is going to get turned loose on the outside as the cornerback spins out of there. Brian Jackson expecting that Dominique Franks will be there. Not quite sure why Jackson would have spun away from that. He was the deeper of the two threats. <laughs> the 
shovel pass. Quigley, 10 at the 5, and he's down to the 2. Angus Quigley, a junior out of Cleburne, Texas, got the shovel pass and takes it almost into the end zone. And Quigley, a young man at 222 pounds that they were trying to work a bunch into the offense earlier because more of the body size of the John Cornish and the, the, the Brandon McAnderson type guy so he's been in and out of the offense a lot become more Jake Sharp but they haven't forgotten about quickly Jake Sharp joins Reese in, in the backfield they scrimmage from the three yard line that shovel pass was just the thing that they needed and a great job by Reese of running it play back into the boundary Shot. what an open field tackle defensively Lindy Holmes who made an interception last time down drops the ball carrier for a loss Lindy Holmes who played has played a bunch of different positions for Oklahoma played some free safety he plays cornerback and the coaches talk about how what a great athlete is he never tires that's two big plays down on the goal line now you're at a second and six second and goal from the six I think it's got to be on Reese's shoulder that four wide receivers to his left expect him maybe to roll out that way looking for one of those guys. Well, he's got him spread out and also last time he ran a quarterback draw. Four wide receivers to the left one to the right. Reese right over the middle the ball incomplete the receiver had not even turned around. That looked like miscommunication which is rare. Kerry Meyer who doesn't practice a lot at wide receiver the backup quarterback but very rarely makes mental errors but someone was fouled up on that play because I think Clayton got a hand on yeah, it wasn't it Meyer it looked like was supposed to run a slant or at least the quarterback thought he was going to run a slant and he was running a different route third down the ball rests at the six yard line crowd is on their feet Sooners lead it 14 to 7 527 left until halftime and KU time wants to call the timeout. Kansas. The first charge timeout this half. So we'll take a break. Seven point lead and uh, the Jayhawks trying to tie it up. So we are back in Norman Oklahoma and Ryan Reynolds who was the regular at that middle linebacking spot the junior out of Las Vegas tore up his knee last week against Texas he is done for the year and it is Nick Harris who was playing in the middle right now a huge play and you know the Reynolds would love to be there on this one third down and the ball is resting at the six yard line third and goal four man rush Reese looking looking got it over the middle and the ball is incomplete intended knocked down by Lindy Holmes now folks Lindy Holmes with an open field tackle and now a breakup and he had an interception on the last drive boy you put a star by his name excellent coverage too oh. he never gave up that play took forever to develop and Lindy Holmes stayed with Desmond Briscoe the entire time that's tough to do Brand Center out of the hold of Kerry Meyer the ball will be placed down at the 13 23 yard attempt and he got it <laughs> 14 to 10 our new score so the athletic trivia question and it is who has the longest run from scrimmage in the Kansas Oklahoma series history What's your guess? Mine is uh, Gail Sayers. I, you know, I, I don't know. Oklahoma has such a bevy yeah. of great running backs, and they played for so long. Uh, it could be anybody from Billy Sims to uh, to Mr. Owens who won the the Heisman Trophy. I, I think this is a curveball, and being a, a young man who grew up outside of Washington D.C., I'll uh -huh. go with Rigo, John Riggins. Okay. Ninety-nine yards, Eric Van. Ninety-nine yards, Eric Van. <laughs> and we just happen to have the video of it. Well, now, when was the last time you saw turf that looked like that? <laughs> it has been a while, hasn't it? Okay. It's also been a while since the Oklahoma Sooners have seen anybody go 99 yards against them. So the uh, ever popular Eric Van is, <laughs> is, is, the, is the person 99 yards. Boy. I mean, that's uh, okay. So you got us in the truck on that one. I, I think what that says is, I think a lot of people forget 
how far down this program was right before Bob Stoops got here. Yeah. And, yeah. and then what he's been able to do, we showed you earlier, he's 57 and 2 at home. Everyone's so upset around here. Oh, they've lost four BCS games in a row. And I, I think they forget not too distant pass. This was a bad place for a while. And Bob really changed it around. Yep. Uh, on that last series, Lindy Holmes really came up gigantic. Interception on the, the drive prior to that, and an open field tackle and a knockdown of a pass on that one is the kick return. Iglesias back to the 31. Matt Weiner, let's check in with you with a Sports Center right now. Thank you, Ron. Sports Center right now, powered by Vizio. Interim head coach Dabo Sweeney led Clemson this week after Tommy Bowden's resignation. But the emotional Tigers couldn't stop a Georgia Tech rally and fell to one and three in the ACC. Seventh ranked Texas Tech outscored Texas A&M 23-2 after halftime. The pull away remain unbeaten. And Georgia beat Vanderbilt. No Sean Moreno, 172 yards on the ground. Okay, Matt, back to live action. Quick out pass is complete. And on the move by Iglesias, he is going to wind up with a gain of very close to 12 yards on the play. Now, if you are just not joining us and you were a fan of the Sooners and you're wondering where Manuel Johnson is, he injured his arm and bad enough that he's out for the afternoon. And that's the reason we're seeing a lot of Iglesias uh, and also help from uh, Cheney and from Brian Broyles here in the second quarter. That ball tipped right there by Thornton. Thornton did a nice job reading that and there's a look at Manny Johnson done for the afternoon not quite sure what the prognosis will be as Jack Aroot reported it's in the elbow area but it looked awful when uh, Harris the cornerback rolled over that left arm 14 to 10 Bradford great protection rolls the corner now delivers the pass and just threw it away great great throw to the <laughs> equipment man of KU Take a look right now at the Pacific Life Game Summary. Well, and uh, we were just talking about Manuel Johnson being out. So Sam Bradford has gone to one of his other many good players. That was Matt Clapp, the fullback. And then it has become a little bit of the Joaquin Iglesias show. But he did have that drop, which would have been a first down. Gave Ooh. the ball back to Kansas. They went down, put it gave, gave him ball. three points. You're mm -hmm. right. Uh, that would have been a first down at a... At a very opportune time for the offense to milk the clock and give the defense a time to rest. Bradford over the middle, clearing route, got it complete to Cheney, and Cheney will go for the first down, and he is at the KU 44-yard line. And Oklahoma is going to go hurry up here with 438, and, and Kansas's offense being able to move the ball. I, I, I wouldn't, if I was Bob Stoops, I may say to my offense coordinator, "Can we slow this down just a touch?" Bradford rolls the pocket and throws it complete again. It's Cheney. And it's going to be a gain of, let's say, five yards on the play. But one thing you can do is with Sam Bradford, he's so accurate. All the quarterbacks, it seems, in the Big 12 are over 70%. Completion, those short throws, you can start using those to eat some of the clock as well. About to go under four minutes in his first half. Bradford, quick toss out in the flat. That is running back Murray. And Murray finally forced out of bounds at the 27. And because of the angle, he almost turned it up and scored. Jack Aroot, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, you guys are talking about the accuracy of Sam Bradford. If you consider one thing that his passion next to football is golf, and Bob Stoops noticed it, he talked to Ed Cunningham about how important it is to have your core correctly. His core is going now. Murray came within a step of breaking that one. Jack, to follow up your point, and if you want to uh, to finish it, what he does when he steps through to complete the follow through is something what I get. I think he gets from golf, isn't that right? Well, yeah, he gets it from golf, but take it from a guy that has always thought that golf was a good walk spoiled. I don't know where he gets his core from because I've never hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jack, that's enough. Thanks. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what uh, Bradford worked so hard on is those core muscles, the abdomens, the obliques, the hips, all of those things during the offseason. And that's how you generate a 300-yard drive. So that's how he strengthens his Murray taking it inside the 15 and down to the 14-yard line. It is a first down Oklahoma. So we still got plenty of time in three minutes and ten seconds and it'll start moving again 
And if you're Kansas, I think you may want to start thinking about timeouts. Ninth play of the drive here. Started back at the 31. Chris Brown comes into the ball game at tailback OU. And they give it to him. Tries to turn the corner. Does breaks a tackle at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Oklahoma. I'm not sure how he did not step out of bounds, but I don't think he did. No, I don't think. No, there, there were there were two officials right there running the route with him. Watch him duck his shoulder underneath. Boy, I don't think he did. What a he crossed run. over. What he, he did like You're a right. crossover in basketball yeah. with the ball. He crossed over with his step. What a tough one. And then went airborne to take it into the end zone. Stevens with the extra point attempt. Three minutes on the nose. Three minutes left. Opening hand. New score. Oklahoma 21. Kansas 10. Debo Swinney, of course, taking over for uh, Tommy Bowden, who was uh, fired slashed, turned in his resignation. However you want to, uh, to look <laughs> at it. He was uh, terminated. Uh, Quick looking pass. That's going to be a gain of 10 yards to Briscoe. And Boy. now for Kansas, with those two timeouts and three minutes left, and a quarterback who doesn't get shaken, even though he threw that bad interception, came right back and drove him down the field for a field goal. This is perfect for Kansas. They have plenty of time. They don't have to hurry too bad. Now pressure. Somebody fell down, and the receiver is wide open. He'll score. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Briscoe, 69 yards, and I lost the number of the defensive back, but he fell down on man coverage, and all alone was Briscoe for the score. Well, it has been on that side, Lindy Holmes, all game long, and that time it's Jackson. And as he turns to run, Briscoe just runs right by him. And give Kerry Meyer credit for staying with that side of the field because he could have started working back to the middle and saw that Jackson had fallen down. And Briscoe, well, what a good guy to have back healthy mentally and physically for this KU bunch. Extra point attempt is up and is good by Brandstetter. And just that quickly, in 25 seconds is all it took the Jayhawks. Oklahoma now has enough time to come out and put yes, one in. <laughs> they sure do. And why would it be any other way? But I was mentioning the mental health of Desmond Briscoe earlier in the season. Mark Mangino took a bunch of his players, a lot of his receivers, and put them on the bench in practice, moved them down the, the depth chart. And Briscoe was one of those guys. And at the time, Dexton Fields, a senior, was hurt not playing much and he's a guy who raises everyone's level and they said Briscoe is such a difference maker we had to send him a message and now you see why Jack Arud, let's check with you on the sideline well Ron it's time for basketball as well as football and I thought that was like a fast break oh you opened their practice last night Jeff Capel is their head coach in his third year and Blake Griffin is their all-world guy Jeff I want to talk to you a little bit about what you want to see out of OU this season well we're excited about our season we have a good mix of returning guys coming back some talented new guys and it's always always helps when you have a guy like this Blake Griffin I want to, I feel like a, I feel like a shrub next to you you're so darn tall but what do you want to get out of your team this year what do you think the pivot point is to play for the national title definitely just to play together uh, play smart I mean I think if we do that and we buy into what coach Cable is telling us I think the sky's the limit for us starting to look coach like it could be basket football on uh, hardwood here the way they're scoring back and forth <laughs> it is our offense is high power Kansas has done a tremendous job hopefully in the last 235 we can get some kind of score to widen this gap but it's been an exciting game so far hey thanks you guys and fellas next time you have me interview basketball players Will you bring a ladder? <laughs> we'll get you a stool, Jack. Thanks. <laughs> nice job. This is a high spinner taking it to 12 by Murray. Murray tries to get outside. Now reverses it again. And he has a little bit of a wall. And Murray finally tackled as a flag comes down at the 32. And I'll tell you, there are two players down. 
both KU and OU players at one at the 12 and the other with the 13. Jock Crawford is down for KU and it looks like Travis Lewis the linebacker number 28 for the Oklahoma Sooners. Yeah, let's see if Crawford and Lewis get tangled up. Gurdon return legal block in the back. And the return team 10 yard penalty first down. Well it was Travis Lewis coming back to try to throw a big block on Crawford and both of those guys end up down on the field and those are both guys who figure heavily into their lineups remember both of these teams as Crawford's the first to get up have struggled in kick coverage kick return so they have started to put more of their starters out there well that's that's the risk and reward of having to do that sometimes you can end up taking your leading tackler uh, like Lewis and, and, and possibly losing him on a special teams play. Here he comes up prepares to throw the block and the way he threw the block he received quite a blow to his shoulder and to his neck. He's being helped off uh, the field on the near sideline Briscoe by the way you got to hear this folks we've only played one half of football or 222 short of it. Briscoe has 193 yards receiving with that long 69 yarder with the defensive back falling down. That is the fifth highest in Jayhawk history. But that fifth highest is for an entire game. Well, you've so, got so just <laughs> hang on. He'll annihilate that in the second half. You've got one team, 282 yards. So Kansas, 341 for Oklahoma. And I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Well, Murray on the running play will go for very short yardage. Holt will make the stop on him. One other uh, comment about Jeff Capel as a timeout has been called. Uh, Jeff Capel, the head coach here at Oklahoma, has done a magnificent job with this foot with this basketball team. They did not have a midnight uh, madness. Reset the game clock to 2:16. You can hear reset the game clock until 2:16. To complete that story, Jeff said, "Hey, I went to Duke. We didn't have midnight madness." I am a guy who was all business as you look at Blake Blake Griffin being interviewed by the multitude of media there last night but they are in their practice gym they're not even in the main auditorium so to speak Jeff visiting with his players but he said I'm an all business all work guy and to have one of those midnight madness it's great entertainment but I'm not here to entertain I'm here to work and my job is I only have X number of days to get my kids ready so they didn't have midnight madness. Wait, wait you mean he wants a practice that means something <laughs> shame on him <laughs> come on coach I'll tell you he was quite a player for uh, Mike Krzyzewski at, uh, at the Duke Blue Devils had that long running jump shot that uh, tied North Carolina sent a famous game into uh, overtime that with a Cameron indoor Bradford near sideline complete. Well, and the reason that you're seeing Cheney in the game, Quentin Cheney, is because Manuel Johnson is out with an injury. Cheney, who had a huge game against West Virginia last year in the Fiesta Bowl, he's a very capable guy, but he'd fallen down the depth chart. Now with Manny Johnson out, you're going to see more of 84. Bradford playing right over the middle. They love this one, and he's got him open. It's Iglesias. Iglesias inside the 25 and then just runs out of bounds. And we still have 158 showing on the clock. Well, he doesn't want to be outdone by Desmond Briscoe. <laughs> but you, you said it best. That was a clear out. And it was all because of the protection that that came underneath. And now the defense has had to run with the deep routes. It takes them a while to get back to make the tackle. Yep. Very quickly to the line of scrimmage as they're just now getting the chain set across the way. It is first and ten. Line of scrimmage is at the KU 20. Basketball on grass. That's what we're seeing here today. But it may be a five-hour game. I don't know. DeMarco Murray right at the middle. Has five. Has ten. Cat it off at 17 yards. He'll take it to the four. Tackled by Stuckey. You know, sometimes you hear coaches like we heard about with Kevin Wilson with Monday's practice. Oh, he's healthy. We've seen it practice. We've seen it practice. Well, they weren't seeing it on the field. And the way that DeMarco Murray has run, remember the one down the goal line where he bounced off the tackle? You know that's the he reason he's back. here. They were, they were signing another player, and he was playing high school basketball, and the coach said, show him how you can dunk the ball, and he bounced one high off the glass and jammed it, and Stoop said, tell him I have a scholarship for him <laughs> as well if he wants to come play. That's how the head coach got to see this man Murray. 
And Murray will put a head down and take it to the two. Stuckey made that tackle a minute ago and actually saved a touchdown on a runaway run by Murray. And Kansas, I think, should think about a timeout here. You got second and goal. Maybe, maybe if they get to third and goal, because the way that Kansas was moving the ball, I would want some time on the clock to put Reesing back out on the field. Well, <laughs> you're not going to have a defensive back fall in every series. <laughs> this is a good point. <laughs> yeah, but I'd like to give it a shot the way Briscoe's going right about now. You've got a hot hand, ride it. Oh, that's, well, that's for sure. Almost 200 yards in one half of football. Murray, left side. He gets walloped and is being pushed back. Great job of the KU defense, and it'll be at the four yard line, third down. Springer leading the way. And let's not forget that. KU is without their best run stopper, Philippe Blakesley. Boy, that's a nice point of attack. And we showed you the impact players of those linebackers, all three of them getting in on that tackle. And I think Bob Stoops very happy to let this go down. And I think they'll take a timeout and get two plays. I, I, this is a great strategy by Bob Stoops. Timeout. What a reminder coming up on the Cooper Tires halftime report. John. Craig and Doug and they'll have highlights and all the scores. Well uh, we had a game going there for a bit. I thought wow this thing's going to be over in about three hours and ten minutes. This baby's going to go five hours at the rate we're going. Oh use Iglesias. Now we talked about Briscoe a minute ago. Nine receptions 193 yards. That is a sooner record for receiving in a half. And in the game, receiving in a game for Oklahoma is 206 yards, which was happened earlier in the year. Of course, that's a KU record already for Desmond Briscoe. Yeah. <laughs> but Manuel Johnson, who's injured at 206 earlier in the year against TCU, which was then an OU record, I think we're going to see that one fall this afternoon. <laughs> Well, speaking of records tonight, number 11, Missouri, takes on number one, Texas, down on the 40 acres in Austin. And you can bet the footballs will be flying in the air down there. To see <laughs> yeah, there's maybe be some record setting performances mm -hmm. at that one. And now with third down, I like that timeout by Coach Stoops. And you've got two receivers to the right. Look for uh, two slants up top. Well, it is third down. The ball is at the four. Bradford looking looks to the left drills the ball and it is caught by Iglesias but the defender was right there pushing on the play and a timeout is called by OU Harris defensively so it's going to be fourth down at the two yard line and I think that they should kick the field goal here as Oklahoma takes a timeout but watch these two receivers coming this way and Bradford who has plenty of time never even looks at them he kind of stays on there stays on there on the left side and he just forced it. He, he never looked back through his progression to see if there was someone open in the end zone and I think they'll look at that on film and say Sam just settle in you have time go you through the why, whole progression. You know why I look to the left and only to the left. Look at the right side of the goalpost and look at the sun you're looking yeah. into right now. Yeah. When I looked up and saw the three wide receivers, I thought if he goes to any one of those guys, it's going to be tough to come down with the football. Well, and they were they were running across the end zone, so he wouldn't have had to throw it high in the air. He could have drilled it. Uh, I, I hear you on the sun there, but I still think he should have gone through. He still could have come back to the left, but he should have gone through his progression. Stewart is coming in, and they will line up. It appears to attempt. A field goal and this is going to be placed down at the nine yard line so a 19 yard attempt by the way 701 combined yards in the first half. So it's not the end of the first half. We have four seconds left. And a reminder, just what I was talking about, college football and ABC is going to continue tonight. Number 11, Missouri at number one, Texas. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines at ABC. And that begins 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Big difference maker should be Brian Arakpo again. He, he at times took over Phil Lodeholt, the left tackle for Oklahoma and as much as Chase Daniel likes to throw it around I would expect Mr. Arakpo to have another big day. Well, let's take a look and talk about the QB bunch in the Big 12. Now we're going to go through the season down here in the Big 12. There's so many great ones. 
but we'll look at the pass efficiency. That's how we'll rank them this week. Nine Big 12 quarterbacks are ranked in the top five when you throw in Reesing and Joe Gans and Robert Griffin, the young man who's playing just up the road in Stillwater for Baylor. It's amazing how good this off the, the offenses are, and it all traces back to the two coaches on the sidelines today. Bob Stoops hired Mike Leach out of Kentucky to come in when he was uh, brought to Oklahoma and also brought Mark Mangino, and they've splintered out around the conference and uh, have brought this spread offense that Mike Leach first brought here all around the conference. So we got four seconds left. Four seconds left in the opening half. 24-17 Oklahoma leading Kansas. <laughs> Moreland prepares to kick it off for the Sooners. Kicks it on the ground. Well, it takes a very high bounce. Taken at the 19-yard line. And return back to the 35 is Daryl Stuckey. And Kansas receiving. Let's see what can happen here in the second half. Let's check in quickly with Jack Aru. Jack. Jack, make up your mind. <laughs> Coach, I was just trying to get next to you. Talk about so many, so much yardage, over 700 yards. When you look at offenses on both sides, what do you do at halftime to try to make sure you come out on the high side? Hey, you know what? We're, we're, we're close to making more plays. We had two opportunities down here in the red zone, and we didn't get it done, but we will because our, our kids are executing well on offense. On defense, we got to play a little bit tighter on the routes. We can't give as much room. They're too fast, and our kids are playing a little cautious trying to keep them in front of us. We can't do that. What we got to get up and be aggressive in the coverage. What about the performance, though, with Desmond Briscoe in the first half? Uh, he's playing really well. He's a, he's a guy who can make plays for us. He, he, he's a great athlete. And if we get the ball near him, he'll go catch it. Thanks, Coach. Good All right. Thanks, Jack. Sorry, man. Okay, thanks, Jack. And uh, thanks to Coach. Our score at halftime, 24-17 Oklahoma. Stay tuned for the Cooper Tires halftime report. And that comes up right after these messages. This telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. And welcome back to College Football, presented by Best Buy. We are in halftime in Norman, hey, Oklahoma, where our score stands at 24 to 17 in a ball game that took over two hours to play the first half. And we had records galore. <laughs> galore. Uh, I see Iglesias, first half record for receiving. Briscoe, 193 yards receiving. That's a record. Defensively, Kendrick Harper's nine tackles annihilates his uh, career best, and he did that in a half. How many more records are we going to get in the second half, uh, sir? Well, unfortunately, I think we're going to see a lot more, especially with the way that Joaquin Iglesias and Desmond Briscoe have been going at it. It's the old, whatever you can do, I can do better. Iglesias catching some balls underneath. Remember, Manuel Johnson is out, so he'll have to be underneath and look for Cheney over the top. But Briscoe has been the beneficiary of some blown coverages by Oklahoma. This one, the safety turned and ran the other way. And then, of course, right before the half, Jackson falls down and goes for big yardage for a touchdown. I would say uh, what you should do uh, at halftime for your adjustments, make sure your defensive backs know what the coverage is. Well, I guess the hurry up by both teams has caused confusion for each team's defense. So you. You, you have yeah. to point the finger in that direction, I guess. Well, and, and we've been talking about Ryan Reynolds being out for Oklahoma, even though he doesn't necessarily always set the secondary. He is a and now he's gone. He had gotten the nickname The Rock because they didn't rely on him, so they have that guy gone, and uh, they look a little discombobulated. Well, the kick is out of the back of the end zone. Gives us time to say, let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. This is the reason we didn't talk about stats at halftime. Because uh, look at how many there are to talk about. Those are total yards. 419 Oklahoma, 282 Kansas in one half of football. If your calculator's broken, that's 701 yards of total offense together. And we said at the end of the first quarter when Oklahoma had 252 that we didn't want to extrapolate to 1,000. Yeah, they're getting close. <laughs> is thrown complete and it's that uh, little stop route John Wilson first time that we have mentioned his name today he's a sophomore played at Klein Forest down in Houston Texas first catch for him 
And immediately they go with a no huddle and a hurry up and they move Jake Sharp out of the backfield as he moves way outside to the left. And they got a procedure penalty on Kansas. Good ball, false start. 77 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Jack Arood, let's check with you. Rod, remember at the top of the show, we said Bob Stoops likes to measure performances by did we give it our all? Did we make any mental mistakes? It was the halftime. He talked to his defense about one mental lapse, and he tried to chide them into being totally involved 100% of the time. Just before they went up, he reminded them again, I want every single one of you involved for 30 minutes. It's Meyer in motion. And the pressure of the ball overthrown Briscoe thrown too tall for him and what Bob Stoops is talking about involved he means mentally uh, because when you have young guys like Oklahoma now has in their linebacking core and some in their secondary they tend to get that one or two mental lapses because they haven't played as much Lewis just a redshirt freshman haven't played as much and they'll tune out at the very wrong time because they haven't figured out I can't tune out against a guy like Todd Reese. Well, Jackson loses his footing falls down and it goes for a 69 yard touchdown for KU shovel pass and the ball is knocked down. Now the crowd always gets excited about this but it's <laughs> just do. an incomplete pass <laughs> and I keep hearing people call it a shuttle pass. It is a shovel pass. When a shuttle is what you take to the airport. A <laughs> shovel is what you either dig yourself forward or we <laughs> can put that in the glossary. We yeah. should. We should. But it what? Fans have never figured that out, have they? Every time they see the shovel goes in the ground, oh, they, they get all looks loose. There's a recovered fumble. And so does the defensive uh, side of the ball usually. It that. is a forward pass is what it is. Third down. They need to take it all the way to the 43. Stepping up. Got by one. Tries to get by a second and throws it. Complete. Nope. They're going to say incomplete, I believe, because the ball got knocked away. Well, and you saw the defensive they are coaches. They're going to give a completion here. And I think that uh, Bob Stoops may challenge this. Remember, no, they're saying incomplete now. But remember last week when it looked like Lamont Robinson had that interception against Texas. Ooh, that was closer than I thought, but I think the right call. It looked to me like Meyer may have had that and and established himself on the ground but that's the key that was why that was not an interception last week for Lam Lamont Robinson against Texas he never established possession when on the ground and that was Lindy Holmes who separated him from the football so put another asterisk by a play that Lindy Holmes made that is a game changing performance as Franks makes the catch picks up what he can until his own teammate knocks him down so we'll hold it right here 13 58 remaining third quarter and uh, let's show you the numbers on Bradford as you look at Sam very typical uh, there have been a couple of times there uh, in that first half where uh, he didn't look at his progression in the back of the end zone stayed locked on the left side a couple of times in there where he wasn't quite the Bradford that we've gotten to know over the last uh, season and a half but still very good numbers as you would expect in this offense. For 35 yards. And I know it's all about recruiting good athletes, but the Oklahoma coaches do an excellent job of working with their receivers for run after the catch. They're all hand catchers, they're not body catchers, and they do so well with the ball once they catch it. Option play. Murray breaks a tackle, breaks another, still on his feet. Ten down to the six. Good heavens, what a second and third effort by Murray as Harper finally pushes him out of bounds. You know, it's interesting. You were telling that story earlier where they found him on the basketball court. That happens so often because coaches during the season can't see them play live football a lot. They have to watch on tape, so the only thing they can see them do live athletically is basketball a lot of times. Obviously very impressive on the hard court. Got a free play here. KU jumped offside. Pass 
is caught for the touchdown Gresham. So they will say pick up the flag. We're not going to hold to it. And boy I mean just over a minute it all it took Oklahoma to get on the scoreboard. Upside 97 defense decline touchdown. Gresham adding to his OU record. There's that word again. Record. We're starting to say that a lot. He is the OU's all-time career leader in touchdown catches for a tight end. He's now up to 18. And that was a short one for him. He usually has long ones this season. Stevens with the extra point attempt. Got it. So let's take a timeout. 13-13 left in the third quarter. 31 Oklahoma, 17 KU. Good look at Gresham as he sits on the bench. And the outstanding tight end who did have maybe the ball was thrown a touch behind, but he had another one that he might have taken in for a touchdown that at the one yard line on the other end of the field back in the first half. 45 seconds. Kansas got the ball back. Lindy Holmes makes another big play on what would have been a first down to carry Meyer, knocks it out of his hands. And all of a sudden, you flip the switch, and Oklahoma goes back on the attack. And 45 seconds later, they're up 31 to 17. Mormon's kick. Ball is going to sail over the deep man's head. Matt Weider, what do you got for us this time, young fella? All right, I've got a nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week. Iowa running back Sean Green ran a rough shot over Wisconsin, 217 yards on the ground, four touchdowns. He's over 1,000 for the season. Big win for Iowa. Text vote to 51234 on your AT&T wireless telephone. Cast your vote. Sean Green for the Hawkeyes. KU with the first down at their own 20. Sharp and Quigley in the backfield this time. Shovel pass. Quigley. And he's going to go for about nine yards. Ron Franklin, Ed Cunningham, Jack Arood coming to you from homecoming in Norman, Oklahoma. We stand at 31-17 OU. And we've just gone under 13 minutes to play in our third quarter. Second and short, down to play with. Here's Sharp. Goes off the left side. He'll have the first down, and that's just about it. Corey Bennett comes from his defensive tackle position and stop the play. Well, we alluded to it a little earlier about Kansas. Earlier in the season, they were trying to get Sharp to fill into that role of Cornish and McAnderson, the two big backs that they had back to back that were so productive. And Mark Mangino during the bye week before Iowa State said, guys, We've got to get Sharp. He's a smaller guy, a slasher. We've got to get him plays that fit for him. And thank goodness if Sharp didn't play as well as he did against Iowa State, they'd probably lose that ball game. Yeah. Well, here's the handoff to Sharp. Has five, has ten. Counted off at about 13 yards. And they run this play, and we watched video on it yesterday. And literally, the quarterback, Reese, just standing there like, come on, come on, take yep. the ball, because we laughed about it yesterday. And then Sharp takes that thing and pow. Gone. And the difference there is he's not reading anything. He is following a blocker and running straight ahead. He's not a real good shifty guy. McAnderson was very patient. So you get a lead guy in front of him, and he just chases him. Well, they reverse on the pitch. In pursuit, defensive lineman can't get there. 50 45, and then bumped out of bounds is Briscoe. So Briscoe has been used for just a little bit of everything today. Briscoe, a young man who burst onto the scene last year. Of course, Marcus Henry is now gone. He was such a big play guy for them last year when the New York Jets just recently released. But this was a guy that they didn't really expect to be as good as he was last year. Honorable mention, freshman All American. Sharp big opening 25 20 down to the 17 yard line finally stopped by Quentin Carter and I am shocked at they are just slicing up this Oklahoma defense the way they are well are this, you? This, absolutely this offensive line doing an excellent job these holes are massive that they are anytime they're down blocking and then pulling around the hole is huge for Sharp to run through. 
First and ten, the ball at the 17. Sharp again, big open in up the middle, he will score. He walks it in from a line of scrimmage of 17 yards out, and it was like there was nobody in the middle of the field wearing crimson and cream. Well, the middle of the defensive line, the two defensive tackles were lined up in the A gaps right on the shoulders of the center, and there was big gaps on the outside of the guard, and that's exactly where Sharp ran through it. Looked to me like Oklahoma had a misalignment with their defensive front there. Extra point attempt is good. Let's take a timeout. Surprisingly, as you look at wide open spaces here, watch Sharp right up the middle. Anybody home? Hello, we came to visit. Touchdown. Kansas cuts the lead to 31 24. Watch Harris and Lewis. Lewis just runs up and gets buried in the fullback. Harris runs up chasing this guy. He's got to be able to read that and get over the top. And this is a walk in touchdown for Jake Sharp. The pull around and Lewis just buries himself into that block. He needed to get over into that line of scrimmage a little more. And Sharp walks into the end zone. And with Ryan Reynolds out, Brent Vittables, who is the defensive coordinator and also the linebackers coach, has his hands full. And he brings Lewis and Harris over to try to explain, guys, you've, you've got not just fill the gap, you've got to be able to scrape over the top. You can't just run and bury yourself into a pulling lineman or the line of scrimmage. And without Ryan Reynolds, that's a big deal. They, they are really missing Reynolds' presence. Well, I mean, what Brent is teaming with right here, and you can see he's not pointing, saying that's the corner we're going to meet and have hot dogs and, uh, and sodas no. after the ball game. He's saying in the first half, in 12 carries, can you have 47 yards? On the last drive, five for 71 yards. Murray. I believe they're going to get Oklahoma for cheating. Through a flag. Holding number 21 on the return team. 10 yards from the He's an offensive foul. lineman. We don't call First that down. holding. We call that cheating. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so 10 yards. And uh, Matt Weiner, uh, let's check in with you. All right, Ron, Sports Center right now, powered by Vizio. You're going to see number one Texas tonight on ABC. Second ranked Alabama's in good shape at the moment. John Parker Wilson has thrown a pair of touchdown passes. They lead Ole Miss 24 10. Third ranked Penn State has closed the gap in Happy Valley against Michigan. The Daryl Clark touchdown pass makes it a three point game. The Wolverines trying to beat Penn State for the 10th straight year. All right, Matt, our situation 31 to 24. Sooners on top. And Bradford throws the pass complete. And on the quick out, it's going to go for about six or seven yards. Gresham, the tight end, dragging folks with him. Justin Thornton will be credited with the tackle for KU. And Gresham, so good in the open field at 6'6, 261 pounds, uses a stiff arm. He's so hard to tackle. You think go low on him, go down around his legs, but he's so powerful and fast in his lower body, as you saw there, he could run right through arms of defenders. Well, Brown, and I'll tell you, he was tripped just close enough. He's not going to have the first down, I don't believe. James Holt wraps him up. And you can see that yellow line. He's just short of it. So it'll be third down. No, they're going to say first down. Now they signal first down, so they'll move the chains across the way. Looked like a generous spot to me. It looked to me like Brown was down well before that line. Prior to stop, ball start, 34 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Matt Clapp. Looks like he's got his Halloween costume on a little early. Bought that helmet with the hair that hangs out. The mullet, the mullet hat. <laughs> Down at 15. Sam Bradford turns. There's an audible going. And straight ahead with the running play. Maybe a gain of one, and that's it. Be second down at 14. Jamal Green is the guy who's down at the bottom of that pile. 
thing I've noticed with Oklahoma, it's almost like drive by drive. One drive, they're a hurry up, throw it everywhere. The next drive, or a drive or two later, they're a pound it straight ahead, more standard offense. I wonder if that's part of the plan, or if they want to start trying to integrate those two things as the season goes on. Bradford resets. Here comes pressure. And throws it incomplete. Whew, that was a dangerous throw. He was trying to find Clapp back across the middle. And the defense was closing in. You realize how far he ran. He came all the way to this side and then reversed it. And what his teammates were trying to help out so much, the best block thrown was an OU player. Oh, another, on another OU one. player. I you saw, saw that too. Yeah. <laughs> Almost laid him out. Third down, they need to take it to the 35. Bradford. Drills it and it's a little bit low intended for Iglesias. Wow, what a momentum changer we are starting to see. That's two three and outs in the ball game. That that drive by Kansas where they ran it right down the throats of Oklahoma has totally stunned this crowd and put all of the energy on the Jayhawks sideline. Beg your pardon. There were four plays on that drive. They had one earlier. Got a first and now. It is punting time. Patterson, the deep man for KU. Uh, the contingent of uh, Kansas faithful, you can hear them chanting, block that kick. And Nall's kick is uh, a wobbly spiral, and fair catch is made at the 40 yard line. So Reesing. Asking for last minute instructions before he comes on the field. And it'll be sharp along with him as the flag says. Personal foul, wow. Kansas. Whoa. Don't know if it's a post play or not, but it is way back at the line of scrimmage. Well, I think we know who the offending party is. Springer. Yeah, Justin Springer. Now the coach has followed him on down the sideline. He had not finished what he was going to say. It was it was a post play foul because they moved it from where the fair catch was made. And uh, things heated on the sideline. Let's be yeah. careful with those open yeah. microphones. And, and you know, this guy got caught last year. Mark Mangino became a YouTube sensation. I think sometimes he can go a little far with his language towards his players. Well, the penalty pushes it back to the 26 yard line. And it's uh, Crawford, who was in the ball game and a short yardage on the carry, tackled by Jackson. Under 10 minutes to play, third quarter. Seven point lead, Oklahoma. Racing. Broke away from the tackle. And now, as he cuts to the sideline, has the first down and add about seven more after that. English is the man who had him dead to rights, and he ran right by him. Watch this. Yeah, well, speaking of the head coach's language, what he calls racing is sparky because he just gives a spark every time he takes off, makes a play. He's so much more elusive than you would think. Quick pass to the near sideline. Whoa, maybe a gain of one. Jack Aru, uh, you got something for us, Barton. Yeah, you were talking about Sparky, the quarterback, Reesing. Maybe one of the reasons why he is the spark to this offense is the fact that the reporter asked him one time, is there anything ever out there that shakes your confidence? Thought for a minute, he said, absolutely nothing. I've been watching him around the sidelines, guys. No sense of urgency, a sense of purpose. In fact, he's always up off the bench watching the defense when he's not out there. <laughs> Play action sits in the pocket. This time doesn't get away. Fumbles and the ball is recovered by Spikes. Spikes for a moment looked as though he's going to try to pick the ball up. 
And then the big tackle thought better of it and just covered it up. Well, and this is Jeremy Beal. Excellent job came from his defensive end position. A guy who had moved from middle linebacker. Some people thought maybe they'd move him back with Ryan Reynolds. But Spikes did the right thing. Now a third and long. Let's see if Reason can they're, remain calm. They're 0 of 5 on third down conversions today. And uh, I would say the numbers are against them on this one as well. Got to take it all the way to the 48-yard line of Oklahoma to keep the drive going. Greasing almost picked off. Cutting in front and the play was Keenan Clayton. Now, look how huge that penalty is. They would have had first down at the, what, around the 41-yard line if the 15-yard penalty had not occurred. And now they're punting after picking up a first down from the 33. Fourth time that they punted this afternoon. And it's Broyles who is back deep. You don't want a return kind of kick. You want one that he has to fair catch or you have time to get coverage on. Line drive, very returnable. Broyles, near sideline, 35 to the 40, and he finally is tackled at the 42. So 35 on the kick and 10 on the return. So when we come back, it is Sam Bradford's turn. His ball club leads it by a touchdown. ESPN College Football on ABC brought to you by Dodge. Introducing the all-new Dodge Journey. If you can dream it, do it. Dodge. Grab life. College game day is built by the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. And Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. Oklahoma 31 24 and a reminder ABC Thursday at 10 9 central and all new life on Mars the next great cop show has arrived and it is after an all new Grey's Anatomy life on Mars Thursday ABC 10 o'clock 9 central Sooners with a first down at their own 42 yard line following that punt. Rarely, Bradford under center. And on the play action, got a man open over the middle, and he's got it to 22, and it is Cheney down to the 20 yard line. Harris made the tackle, he had the coverage. Yeah, he had man coverage on that side, and Bradford was looking at this the whole way. He knew he had a mismatch going to the inside. Harris, the best cover corner for Kansas, but Cheney ran a great post route. Good. Actually, double move. And dropped it. Now this is going to go for a gain to around the 17. DeMarco Murray tackled by Rivera. Yeah, he, he made the move, and the defensive back bit. Then he took it back over the middle, and Sam did a nice job of just laying it out there, saying, run under it. Well, he knew he had it the whole way, and you can see him kind of gathering his feet, getting ready for the throw, because he knew he was going to have it when he saw that double move work. Quick pass, spinning on the move, going in a head-high tackle. Here comes the flag, and that'll be a 15-yarder. It'll go half the distance to the goal by Resby. Resby's arguing his position that he didn't grab the face mask at all. Of course, we'll take a look at it and see if he did or not. There's a lot of discussion going on right now, which makes me think that maybe one of the officials there saw something. Or no, they're just pointing out. I think the you know what else they could be talking about if we get an opportunity to look at it. That was very close to being a backwards pass rather than a forward pass, meaning a running play rather than a passing play. Still doesn't change the face mask if he did grab foul. it. First caller. Oh, there you go. For seven on the defense. Been waiting for that to be to called goal. all year. First down. Had, one, had one last night in the Boise game, and they didn't call it. That is a new rule and a good rule. Resby, nice job getting up. He grabs inside the pad and yanks yep. him down immediately. Nice call. If, if he had grabbed it and spun him around and not taken him down immediately, they wouldn't have called it. But I think this is a good rule change. We saw it last week. Danny Wells got pulled down and almost hurt his foot. Yeah. I take it back. At the Boise game last night, they did call the horse guard. It, it was directly from behind. First down. 
First down and goal, Oklahoma, as they put the ball to rest at the eight. Murray, touchdown, walking. John Cooper, the center, led the way with a magnificent block. Huge for these guys in Crimson and Cream. Murray, the big thing for them is Murray, I think, has regained oh, that confidence that he seemed as though he had lost a little bit. It's and it's weird. You need it was in his head. It was definitely mental. He was healthy. You need a game like this to do that. And down the stretch where Oklahoma has to win out to have a chance to get back in the national championship conversation. Nice to have number seven healthy mentally and physically. Take a look at the best buy playbook. This is nothing but a pure zone running play. So that means everybody's going to roll off, roll off, roll off. But the guy you want to focus on is the center. An excellent job right here by Cooper. Watch as he reaches over, working almost one on one on the defensive tackle. Got under his pads, and that is a big guy, Richard Johnson, that he knocks to the ground. Not quite a pancake. But he did a good job of keeping his pads low, and that's exactly what Murray cut off. Good vision by Murray. Well, you heard you heard me give him credit uh, on the play, the center uh, John Cooper, and he you could see right there he threw a great one. Jack Aru, what do you have for us? Well, you're talking about Demarco Murray and about how he had to get his head right and get in the groove, as they say. He admitted it. He said, "Look, I know I'm physically able, but he said what I'm looking for is the big one." At first, I thought he meant the big one was a breakaway TD run. But I think when you see his performance today, what he was talking about was a big one, was just a total 60 minutes of good football. So far, so good. And, and you think about the injury he had. He shattered his kneecap. I mean, a broken half. Uh, that's a, that's a mind-altering injury. Now, the good news is it's fixable. They staple it back together, and it's not like blowing your ACL. Uh, I mean, you do have the rehab, but it's not as debilitating. But think about that. You're laying there, your kneecap's broken in half, and think about how that affects you mentally. And I think Jack's right. He needed a big game, and I think he's had that today. So the mental part comes back. Westmoreland kicks it to the two. Flag has come down, and as he's knocked out of bounds at around the 24, so again, KU is playing into the hands of the Oklahoma defense. They're going to start with very poor field position. Well, and I wouldn't be surprised if Kansas goes right back to Jake Sharp. The confusion of the linebacker position. Holding. Number six. On the return team. Ten yard penalty. First down. And uh, Lewis. And uh, we saw the confusion. Remember, Ryan Reynolds out. Nick Harris comes from strong safety to middle linebacker. And we saw that walk in. And uh, you can't say enough what the communication of Ryan Reynolds meant to this team and him being on the sideline with a hurt knee not going to help them on this drive. Pass on the flat complete that's Briscoe. That is the first catch for Briscoe this half. And we have 6.03 left to play in the third quarter. Brent Venables bouncing around on the sideline. And I guarantee you, he is within earshot of both of those linebackers. And he's trying to talk it, talk them through it right now. He's got his hands full, not only coordinating the defense, but that is his position group. He's got a lot of work to do going forward this season with Ryan Reynolds out. Nick Harris, number five, the linebacker on the shading to the right side. And it's going to go out to the 29. Jack Aroot. Well, Ron, not only on the sidelines is Brent Venables trying to get within earshot of his linebacking core, but when they are on offense, he gathers up his linebackers in this last section. He had the old fiber board, the chalkboard up, and he was diagramming assignments. He was going back to basic football for his three linebackers, trying to show them what they should see and how they should react. Let's see if they absorbed it. Second down. Line to make is the 32. Big opening. Broken tackle, 35. 
drive it and finally stopped is Jock Crawford. Lindy Holmes making the defensive stop. Travis Lewis had a shot and got blown up over the tackle. Well, if Oklahoma has an Achilles heel going forward this season, it was exposed last week against Texas. Their linebacking core is really struggling. You were already thin. Curtis Lofton left early. Ryan Reynolds, the only guy who had starting experience coming back now, he's gone. You've got two converted safeties playing linebacker and a redshirt freshman in your regular rotation. It's going to be a tough go to get these guys right. From the 37, Reese ran by the pressure, still on his feet, and then wisely slides down at the 45 and still maintaining all uh, all limbs. You know, Jack made the, uh, gave the report earlier about watching him on the sideline, how calm he is. Think, think of the game that he's had. He's fumbled a couple of times. They've recovered it. He threw that bad interception to Lindy Holmes, but then he comes back, and it's like he has no short-term memory. That's all gone. It's, it's what's in front of me right now. He is mentally a very special quarterback. Racing ball is tipped and then almost caught, almost caught by Briscoe as Beal reached out and got a mid on it. Well, in that time, Venable's trying to get anything going. He does a zone blitz, so the blitz is going to come and Beal backs out the defensive end. And uh, remember that Beal was a linebacker before he left the defensive end. He can read that very well. Nice job. And Briscoe still almost comes up with it. They still have not picked up a third down conversion. This one very makeable, though. About a yard and a half to pick it up there. 0 of 6. Reese steps up, delivers, overthrown. They are 0 of 7 on third down conversions. Briscoe, the intended receiver, guess who was covering him? Lindy Holmes. I'm not saying you should go for it here, but if I were Oklahoma, I'd be awfully concerned as Brent Venable, shake, he's shaking off his defense saying, stay out there. This is safe, a safe look, meaning leave the defense in because I would be very concerned about a fake from Kansas right now. Five punts for KU if they kick this one right here. Rojas waits for the snap at the 32. Fair catch is made at the 18 by Franks. 37 on the kick. And time now for the ESPNU All-State Standings Review. Well, we're going to learn a lot about, look at that, Mississippi. They've already Ole Miss. slayed one dragon. <laughs> they cut yeah, it to within got four. Florida. And, uh, Michigan giving everything to Penn State and look at Oklahoma. I I know everything was doom and gloom around here last week but with as much football as has to be played and as good as this conference is if they can win out if they can win out they, I, I, there's so many scenarios that put them right back in Miami for that national championship game. KU showing blitz that ball is tipped on the rush stepping in was Brorson senior out of Stillwater. You know, there's a ton of Oklahomans on this roster. 12, to be exact, over 13% of their roster is from Oklahoma. And, of course, that goes back to Mark Mangino's time here because he had inroads recruiting when he was coaching here and took them right with him when he went to Kansas. Ball is caught by Gresham. The tight end broke the tackle. Finally stopped at the 40-yard line. Should have been tackled short of the 30. Gain of 22. Marist Wright is the man who had a shot to make the tackle watch, and he blows it up. And Gresham right is, there. Yeah, he, his, he's so much better running with his legs than you would think. A lot, everyone tries to go low because he's 6'6", six, six, but he's so powerful and just runs right through it. Big opening. Brown. 35-30. You just look at the grass. They have not spent any time between their 40 and KU's 30. Everything goes inside the 30-yard line into the 20s, it seems as though. And the Jayhawks with Justin Thornton down their free safety. They cannot lose this young man. He's, he's such an important key. Another good block by the center. Cooper, and I believe Thornton gets injured as he comes in here to finish this up. Landed. Kind of awkwardly bounced right up. 
Oh, uh, yeah, it landed on that thigh. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you wear that big thigh pad, and sometimes it'll actually, when you land, it'll turn, and the hard edge will go between, you know, that right underneath your thigh muscle there. And so they're there to protect you, but occasionally if you land funny, the hard plastic on the outside of those deals will jam you right in that muscle. Well, that's now 171 rushing yardage for Oklahoma this afternoon, and we're still in period number three. Now we're over a thousand total and uh, wait are we in the fourth quarter with 321 to go or no it's third quarter. Yeah that's what yeah, it I just thought. seems like the fourth. <laughs> that's unreal. Seems like the fifth almost. Get, get out the record books and start <laughs> looking through we're headed for some. We've already got some. From the 22 yard line Brown right up the middle puts the pads down and fights his way for three. Stucky is the man who stops him. Bradford near a career high of 421 yards passing. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of career highs, a lot of school records, maybe some total offense records between the two teams. Chris Brown. Inside, gets a block. 15, 10, and the five. We may have holding. Yep. Flag is thrown back at the 19 yard line. Gain of 15. Wipe it out. I'm not sure that who they called. I, I didn't see anybody. Oh, yeah. I think they may have gotten the outside receiver. Adron Tanell, I think they may have gotten as he was out there trying to finish it. That was the block you mentioned. Got a block. I think he maybe extended yeah. his hands a little too much. Yeah, but he got a block, all right. <laughs> so it uh, it cost him a gain of 15. Penalty moves it back to the 30-yard line of KU. And it is second down and 20 as Murray comes into the lineup and now has set up in the slot to the left. Next to the last receiver of the left. Bradford. Let's see, Glacis again taking yeah. off before the ball is there. Well, you see that again, I was talking about earlier. Guys who are so good in the open field, and the, and the problem is he lets this ball into his chest. When you go to cradle a ball, and you've got that hard plastic shield on your chest for your shoulder pads, and you don't get your hands turned around the right way, thumbs together, uh, it tends to glance off. And, and that also starts to show the arm strength of Bradford. The ball gets there quicker than it did last year, and I think some guys may still be adjusting to that. Bradford. Wide open. Nobody covered. Gresham, the tight end, you see him kicking at the football. I mean, folks, I use the term from time to time, look like the first guy out to practice. When we showed you the replay, Look how open he is. Now the outside receiver is going to come clear it in and there is nobody there. The guy who's supposed <laughs> to be helping in coverage is coming on a blitz and there's only I mean, uh, well, nobody. Me. <laughs> uh, the safety and the corner bit on the inside route. That's just bad recognition and that one's going to haunt Bradford tonight. So the field goal attempt coming up is one of 47 yards and the longest I believe is 36 by Stevens. And he misses this one wide to the left. At the distance, but he yanked it. Do you get the sense that Oklahoma is making just enough mistakes to let Kansas stick around? No, and I will and I won't no call question. them. I won't call no them question. Yeah, and I will not call them pesky little Kansas anymore. They had a great year last year, one in the Orange Bowl against Virginia Tech. But uh, Oklahoma who on paper and well, on most of the game appears to be that better team is making a lot of errors. Yeah, they missed a 15-yard run that he almost scored. He's out at what the two-yard line. Yep. So the holding pushes it back, and then a wide-open receiver, and uh, Sam just missed it. And how many drop passes? At least three key ones that we have seen. And here comes Kansas right back at you. Then they got decent field position at their own 30. This play is going to go backwards, though, as Crawford being pursued by Jeremy Beal, and he'll knock him down for a five-yard loss. Coming up later, we'll be naming the Chevrolet players of the game. That's that's my guy right there, Lendy Holmes. Uh, oh, without, without him, what's the score right now? 
Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> uh, Kansas would be even closer in this ball game, no question. Yeah, it might even be tied or ahead as well as he's played in the big plays he's made to break up you know, the interception of the goal line. He's played sensational. Recent. English is there to stop that play after virtually nothing. Angus Quigley. That was a nice change of direction by Austin English. Big 12's preseason defensive player of the year. Led the league in sacks even though he missed a bunch of time with a broken leg last season. A great compliment by Bob Stoops said he could play fullback tight end. Any linebacker any of those positions and he'd be a great player. Well let's see if they can break the. The jinx here get off the snide they're 0 of 7 on third down conversions they need to take it out to the 40. And Oklahoma calls a timeout. Timeout. Oklahoma. It's their first charge timeout this half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Well, we've got the QB bunch going on here in the Big 12. So let's see how our two top Big 12 guys here have been playing. Other than a couple of interceptions, as we look at who has better support for Sam Bradford, he, I think he's got a better group of receivers. When you look at the running game, coming into the game, I believe that Todd Reeson had the advantage. Not so sure about that today. Offensive line, I think that the advantage has to go to Sam Bradford. And uh, defensively, I think we have to give the advantage to Sam Bradford. And then on special teams, we'll just go ahead and scratch that out. Both of them are struggling with special teams. So we talk a lot about these great quarterbacks, but I think it's sometimes good to talk about what is their supporting cast. And I think when yeah. you look at what Todd Reesing has done and his numbers in a game like this, except for those two interceptions, and not taking any away from Bradford, but Reesing not quite working with as much. So third down, third down and 15. Reason sacked at the 19-yard line. McCoy. And it's the third sack of the afternoon. And that one that was the real McCoy. Well, I talk about the real McCoy. Watch this big athlete make an incredible move all the way back across. And watch him how quick he gets sideways, turns his body, goes right between the right guard and the center Cantrell. When a guy's moving that fast and that big, it is so hard to slow him down unless you're directly in front of him. See if he can get a coverage punt off here. Rojas waits for the snap at the five. That is the end of the third quarter. So <laughs> we'll talk more about it in just a moment as we change ends of the field and head for the final 15 minutes of play. 38-24 Oklahoma. This presentation of college football presented by Best Buy will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, we are back in Norman after three quarters, 1,002 combined yards for these two teams. Isn't that amazing? I want 1,500. Not stopping until they give us 1500. Uh, that, that's very attainable. We're talking about two <laughs> yes, teams. That might be done by one. Another 300 in a quarter. So Rajas waits for the snap. Franks is the deep man for the Sooners. He's dropped off to the 45. I tell you, we got a hold. They're going to have to do this again as the ball is caught at the 28 yard line. And the tackle. Now here comes another flag in. That's going to be a hold on KU. Well, the good news for KU is I think we're going to get a hold down here or a block in the back, so they'll offset replay the down. So they're not going to get backed up anymore. I don't believe. That's a discussion.
Now we'll go talk to Bob Stoops to explain. Now, they're asking him what he wants to do, which makes me feel like double. I mean, yeah. uh, two fouls in KU. Then. Maybe, yeah. There were two fouls on the play. Holding number seven on the kicking team. Yeah. Legal block in the back. On the receiving team, those fouls offset. Replay, fourth down. I'll tell you, KU was in real danger of getting that thing backed up to the five yard line to snap it. Yep. And really give you no use of great field position. Yeah, they got lucky that uh, there was the block in the back call. I believe that was on Quentin Carter. But, uh, that was. Moses Madu, who got held, he was coming clean underneath the wing. Yeah, he was. And he was. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it again. Now, what you'd want to do on the right side of that Kansas protection scheme, right over here, try to confuse them. Maybe that's where they came off last time. Maybe run some type of twist because they're in their head right now. No, Broyles is the deep man. And he's under it at the 28 yard line. Oh, what, what a block was thrown. He's going to be tackled just at the 40 yard line. 52 in the punt, 10 on return. Lindy Holmes, let's take a look at it. Well, what's amazing about all these plays, of course, that's to stop a touchdown or field goal. These two plays in a row were on the same goal to go situation. He makes the tackle on Sharp and then knocks away on Briscoe, only a field goal. And then on a third and 15, which was complete for a first down, he separates Meyer from the ball. So it's not that just he's made some big plays, he's made them at huge times during the ball game and I go back to without Lindy Holmes I wonder what the score of this ball game is flag is down play action Iglesias almost all along makes the catch then drops it they say incomplete at the 15 yard line to Harper on the cover Legal shift. Offense, two men moving at the same time. Decline, second down. Well, with this offense, first and 15, second and 10, flip a coin. So I can see why Kansas would decline that penalty. Now this penalty should be against the defense for drawing them offside. Number 14, the offense. Well, they're going to call it on. Still second down. Yeah, yeah they're going to call it on Bradford. I beg your pardon. But you're right. How often do they get that call wrong? Normally, yeah. When you got, yeah, but he moved. Yeah. yeah. He was falling back when he called for it, but <laughs> if, if a defender on either side of an offensive player or head up comes into the neutral zone and flinches, yeah, that's mm -hmm. encroachment. And they yep. almost never get that call right. But the quarterback can't uh, fall backwards, though. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if Sam's like me, he could be falling asleep. I mean, this sucker's been going on for a while. And now another one. Andy Boule, I believe, the defensive end, is going to get called. Wonder where the second one was coming from, After though. The play. Personal foul, 47 defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. This is a point of emphasis this year, not just with quarterbacks, when a player lets up, when he is defenseless. You cannot hit them. And even though Anya Boule only puts his hands on him, Bradford clearly letting up. And a, a, a penalty, quite frankly, that I don't think has been called enough this year, considering they talked about it so much during the offseason. So the new line of scrimmage is the 50. From the tight end inside the 35 down to the 34. There's Rivera and Harper on the tackle. 
Good hands by Gresham, and he has suffered from the drops. We saw the one earlier today that he dropped near the goal line last year. He had a ton of drops, but he's worked very hard. And there you see him turn his hands over, get those thumbs together, make a nice hands catch. What did I tell you a minute ago? From the 50 to the 35, they don't tarry. <laughs> they just don't stop there. They go beyond it. Yeah, they, they, there's no reason to hang out there, Ron. There's no points there. I'll tell you what, it must be low rent. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Bradford. Got it complete. That's Iglesias. And Jack Aroop, what do you got for us? Ron, one of the things that Sam Bradford admitted last season when he played is he tended to be a little emotional when he was out there. It ended up with some happy feet. He ended up making some decisions to pluck and flush out of the pocket. This year, and you've seen him, and I've seen him now, he is willing to stay in that pocket and take the hit after the pass. It's almost like Tiger Woods getting up over a putt. He doesn't get rattled anymore. He says it's because I try to be emotionless. Well, it's an emotionless, emotionless, <laughs> 445 yards for him today. New school record. How about that, Jack? Straight ahead, Murray. Nothing there. Bounces off. Bradford outside the block. And uh, that was not a thing of beauty. But <laughs> anyway, I think Murray's going to wind up losing one yard on the play. You know, it's interesting uh, talking about how calm Bradford is. And we've seen Todd Reesing who has the same demeanor about him. And I, we've been around this conference now, going back to last year, seeing these young quarterbacks come up. They're all very similar in that way. They all don't let their emotions get ahead of them. They know the whole team is looking at them. It's amazing, not only their, uh, their athletic attributes, but their mental attributes. They're all very similar, I think, in this conference. There's some really good ones. We're going to shift Brown. From the left side over to the right, big opening. Has five, has ten. Counted off at a gain of about, that's going to be what, 19 yards in the play. He'll take it to the 10 yard line. First and goal, Oklahoma. I uh, I got the number of that truck. It was 72. Duke Robinson. I mean, he got his pads up underneath James Holt, and there was just no chance of closing that hole. Chris Brown. Another opportunity at tailback as they go first down at the 10. Pressure. And the pass thrown in the end zone. It, a collision that just didn't have to be by Thornton. And it's going to cost him pass interference because they were just knocking Bradford down. I mean, he had all kind of pressure on him. I think Thornton got spun around. And he never got his head back to see the ball, and so he ran in. Pass interference. Number 46 defense. Ball will be placed at the two yard line as the foul is in the end zone. And I think that Broyles, who's so good, the inside receiver here, sets him up, then spins back around, and Thornton, he, he bit on that hitch. And it's like that, it, it's like a hitch and go, and Thornton read that. And we know how good Broyles is when he turns and runs. He's very quick. down in the corner of the end zone and that is Smith Kobe Smith and Smith in the game of course because Brody Eldridge who moves between tight end and fullback has an ankle injury not able to go today Amazing thing is we still got 12:02 left to play in this ball game. Stevens to attempt the extra point. He got it, and the new score. As we go to break, one more look at this touchdown to Kobe Smith, reserve tight end. It is Oklahoma 45 and Kansas 24. So as now we uh, have shadows covering uh, 95 percent of the field here in uh, Oklahoma territory. I'm just looking up here at total yardage. Oklahoma 637 yards, 407 for KU. This is not the Big Eight anymore. Boy, <laughs> I mean, it, it is amazing. Uh, 
to see those kind of yards. We still got 12:02 left to play in the ball game. And as efficiently as these quarterbacks play, I don't know what defense you could play uh, unless you had a bunch of guys who were going to go to the next level and be starters across the entire field. What you can do to defend these guys. This is a spinner, high kick toward the sideline, and well, a couple of tackles are broken, and now all the way back to the 39 is Stucky. Matt Weiner, let's check with you. All right, Ron, here's a Verizon wireless update. For about three and a half quarters, it looked like this would be North Carolina's first win at Virginia since 1981. But Cedric Pierman tied it up late and then won it in overtime. Virginia wins 16-13. Meanwhile, Penn State has seized the momentum at home. They now lead Michigan 26-17 as the fourth quarter begins.